Oh, I couldn't get a burp out. Oh. Let's read these uh, hot, hot. Make sure everything here is on point. Uh, cunt. I see pigas. I see I'm subscribed to you. Uh, lots of cunts. This is uh, what a what a great way to start off. Just uh, a lot of a lot of cunt comments, man. Uh, oh boy, oh boy. Nothing gets me harder than reading comments. All calling me a cunt. Oh boy, that's uh, that's hotness. Oh. Oh, oh boy. All right. So, so yeah, this is a, a hot live stream. I didn't do one on uh, on Friday, so I thought, hey, why don't I do one on Sunday? You know, it's it's not Friday, but it's Sunday. It's uh, it's still a day, right? So, uh, just talk a little bit about the tricks that I put out this week. Maybe answer some questions. Maybe do a dick reveal. You never know. Oh boy, there goes the uh, there goes the advertiser friendliness. But anyways. Uh, and then maybe answer some uh, well, answer some questions. I already said that, and then talk a little bit about a secret project I have that's hopefully coming out this week. Oh, oh shit! Okay. So before anything, let me actually go to these uh, videos uh, and see the stuff. So, uh, who said fap on camera? Somebody says fap on camera. Uh, that's weird. Keep the Sabbath day holy. Okay. All right. Uh, Dark Magician 99 says if I could fap on camera. That's a little bit, um, I don't know what to tell you, man. Uh, so, uh, a name that I definitely can't pronounce says, uh, you just spent $40 on Illusionist. What'd you buy, dude? What'd you buy? $40 on Illusionist. I, I can't imagine that getting you a lot of stuff. That's probably like, what, one deck? Like half of a, half of a deck of cards? Mm. That's fairly annoying. Oh, shit. Uh, what'd you answer? Did you answer yet? No, you didn't answer. All right. Well, one of the tricks that I put out this week was the uh, the classic piano trick. Uh, that's that's actually a cool trick from a book that I read years and years ago by Martin Gardner, who's uh, no longer with us. Martin Gardner is dead as fuck. Um, he's unfortunately long gone. He died, of my understanding, at 99, uh, which is kind of nuts. Um, but he definitely left a little bit of a legacy behind him. Uh, so the first time I read that piano trick was on his uh, particular project. However, uh, that piano trick is something that when I first saw, I didn't have any idea how it was done. And then when I found out the method, I, of course, lost my shit because I realized, oh, I'm a dumb cunt that doesn't understand mathematics either. So that's the, uh, let's see, what did I call it? I called it Learn the Most Even Card Trick. You got to love the clickbait titles. You got to love those clickbait titles on those uh, videos. Uh, somebody said this guy died lately. No, he died uh, 2010, I think, if my memory is correct. Martin Gardner. He was less of a magician, more of a uh, mathematical guy. But let me see when math, uh, Martin Gardner actually died. He died 2010. Fuck. Yeah, that is, that's really sad. Um, but yeah, he, that's the first time I, I read about that piano trick. And uh, obviously, if you haven't seen that video, you need to see it already. Uh, it's I titled it "Learn the Most Even Card Trick with PewDiePie," and I think I got a a couple of dislikes now that um definitely now that uh, I I put with PewDiePie, and it was just a picture of PewDiePie. Yeah, yeah, that kind of sucks. Um, but yeah, that's that's one of those tricks that people kind of uh, overshadow. Another person I saw do it was another guy who's dead. Shit. Shit. Um, what's his name? Uh, Tom Mullica. He's He had it in a set of, of tapes that he did the piano trick and he repeated it twice. He did it with match uh, matchsticks, that he would do it with matchsticks, uh, two matchsticks, making sure that everything's kind of dope. So that's another one who's dead, who unfortunately did that trick. Uh, but that's a, that's a great trick. Don't don't just don't do it because you think people are going to figure out the mathematical principle. It's pretty, pretty hot. Uh, let me answer these questions here. I know there's a lot coming in here. Oh, all right. Uh, uh, somebody saying dab Austin Brown. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna be a. Um, ironically, died from cancer. Uh, Nathan. Yeah, unfortunately, he didn't die. He died from complications uh, from pneumonia, I think, which is unfortunate. Uh, Tom Mullica, which is sucks because he recovered from cancer. He recovered nasty from cancer uh, from leukemia, I think. So he he went over that. And then unfortunately, he had uh, some sort of pneumonia thing. Or no, a botched surgery. He had a botched surgery, which was uh, kind of sucks. 
especially after, you know, overcoming leukemia. But he's one of the people that I, it sucks, you know, I don't want to be selfish, but I never, I would have loved to see him. But unfortunately, he's dead. So, uh, let me go back here and see if there's some stuff I missed out here. Hey, Pick Cake, I want to buy a Pick Cake. How much do you think it costs by Ivan Zavarella? I'm not sure. I haven't seen a, um, a Pick Cake uh, in person ever. I actually haven't seen a cake shaped like a pig. Uh, funny enough, when I started the channel, one of the things that I had to compete with to get on top of, um, what do you get, what do you call this, to get on top of the, the recommended feeds and all that shit was all these channels of people that made uh, pig shaped cakes, which is fairly annoying. Uh, but then finally, now I could say that I think I'm the, I'm the best, uh, the best pastry, um, what do you call this, pastry bov or no, what is swine, pastry swine, uh, the most successful pastry swine YouTuber, uh, I guess, for lack of a better term. But that's, um, you know, that, that took a while. Um, so I don't know how much it would cost to get a pig cake. Uh, I'm actually intrigued. I would like to get a pig cake. A 50K pig cake special. Oh boy, um, it's not Sabbath, you idiot. Uh, I was reading one of the comments, Mr. Unknown. Hey from Australia, damn. I got some uh, some Australian love here, that's kind of, uh, that's special. Uh, what time is it in Australia, as a matter of fact? Somebody says nigger faggot, thank you, uh, Ben Baldwin. Uh, thank you for that, I appreciate that. Always, uh, always great when people repeat memes uh, from other channels. Uh, face reveal someday, uh, maybe, maybe if I'm dying, I guess. That could work, uh, I, I guess. Somebody says, can I see your pee-pee? Uh, Vittorio Graziani? Uh, not yet, not yet, maybe. Uh, I keep saying that I wanna do a 100K dick reveal. Uh, I don't know if that's a thing or not. Uh, I'm sure YouTube, maybe vid.me from a couple years ago uh, would have allowed that. Definitely not YouTube. Um, let me see some other comments here. Uh, Dr. Shadow Game says, I bought Real Man's wallet. Do you think that's a good idea? Well, from that's, uh, if I remember correctly, Steve Dron's uh, wallet, right? Or Steve Dron's Real Man's wallet. I've heard a lot of good things about it. I think I saw it in person once. And uh, after that, I never, I didn't get that one. I got the um, the Paul Harris one from uh, the Molika, Tom, Paul Harris one. I was going to call him Tom Harris. Uh, but I got that one. That one is really, really good. And then the Stealth Assassin. Um by Peter Nardi, I think. That's really, really good. Uh, pay, Patreon mail out, that's really funny. Um, but yeah, but I got those two. And then unfortunately, since um, I'm a dumb cunt, uh, if you've been in Magic for, you know, as long, if you've been in Magic for maybe three months, you you have a fucking collection of wallets that are uh, straight stupid because there's no man that needs that many wallets. But I have, uh, I have a stupid amount of wallets. I should have brought them out, but... But I've heard that's a really good one. Uh, who asked me that? Dr. Shadow Games, if that's your real name. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I imagine Steve John's a really good magician. He's, um, I don't think he's going to put his name on something that's not quality. So let me see these other ones. Uh, I'll make a pig cake if you dab on camera. I'm not a, I'm not a bitch. I'm not a bitch, man. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm not going to, I'm not, I'm not going to dab on camera. I'm not going to dab in person at all. I'm not going to dab uh, at all. Uh, let me see. What, what part of the country are you in? America's penis? Uh, oh wait, the mighty olden. You said uh, about Tom Mulligan. He beat stage four leukemia and then died in a standard hernia operation. Yeah, that's what it was. Uh, that's what I, that's, you're hundred percent right on that. Stage four leukemia, which is usually a death sentence. He beat it. And then it was a botched operation and it was unfortunate. Uh, Tom Mulligan passed away because of that. Sucks. Fuck. What a good way to start here. What a depressing reminder here. Uh, hey, dog. Fuck. I just came here. And the first thing I hear is cancer and dead people. God damn. Yeah, you're right. Uh, let's, that should uh, bring the mood up here. Um, let's, let's just bring the mood up here. Unfortunately, not talk about dead magicians. Let me see. Uh, how could you not want to do magic after hearing all these magicians dying with an offer like that? I'll become the world's greatest magician. Was that a suicide joke? Weed in 13? Was that a suicide joke? I think that was a suicide joke. Uh, let me go through here and see the more recent ones. Uh, yo, pig, I have a great A can I developed where they don't announce the number until the cards are on the table. And they don't announce the card until you get to that number. There's a couple different methods that do that uh, in particular. Um, 
I know of, uh, there's a couple bluff ones too. I know Andrew Gerard recently has a project that he came out with. Um, I, I mentioned in the last live stream, it's called, uh, it's in the vault. So he talks about uh, David Hoy and, uh, you know, Hoy principle and all that shit. And he goes over in any card or any number that you pretty much don't have to know the number. And uh, you don't even, you, yeah, you don't have to know the number. They shuffle the cards. It's kind of, a, it's a great method. Um, but yeah, I'm always interested in any cards with any number methods. Uh, let me see the sheet, some other stuff here. Uh, what do you think a non-professional magician, wait, well, hold up. Do you, what do you think? Should a non-professional magician have a script and he should rely on, or should anything be organic and impromptu? I think organic is uh, one of these buzzwords that uh, are just used way too often to kind of sell you products, uh, which is unfortunate because they all have the same shit, organic, anytime, anywhere. Uh, it really depends on you, whatever you feel comfortable with. Uh, I know that there's someone, uh, Luke Jermay. Luke Jermay is heavy on scripts. A lot of people are actually heavy on scripts. Um, if you're a professional, yeah, I, I guess I would, I would lean on a script. Uh, but I think Greg Wilson puts it the best that he talks about the idea of having uh, like a tree. He compares it, uh, performing magic to a tree. So you have the trunk, that's kind of the guaranteed things that you have to go to accomplish a trick. And then from there, the branches, the individual branches that separate, uh, those are where you could play around. So you have the general structure of the trick, that's the tree trunk. And then from there, you could branch off into other stuff. Um, but, uh, you know, that little trunk does have a little bit of a script. And then from there, you could branch off into wherever it is that you want. Uh, but what I find is that I think that for most magicians that I see, it's very obvious that they're using a script uh, and it kind of takes away from the performance. Uh, there's a guy on Foolish that I saw recently. I forgot uh, what his name was. Uh, it's fuck. He does a pool, the pool stuff. I'm sure a thousand of you are going to comment now, but he did a pool trick, right? Where it's an amazing trick and he does it wonderfully. Um, but he pretty much ends uh, the card shoot up and then he catches it in the pool cue. I know the name's going to come to me in like fucking seconds, uh, but what's, let me see, Chef Anton, there, there you go, I uh, thank you, Elusive, and uh, I can't pronounce your name, but you have pictures of a cacti, a cacti there, uh, but Chef Anton, yeah, he, he recently went on Foolus, and it took away from the performance that I'm like, this guy's clearly reading and reciting a script, uh, because I feel like at some points the host wanted to interact with him, and then they kind of had this little back and forth, but he kept uh, with the script tightly. And to me, that kind of took it away from uh, from enjoying the full performance. But again, it was, you know, masterful. But uh, it's, just a, it's a weird thing. It's really what depends on and what looks the most natural. Uh, but to a lot of people, scripts and re rehearsing scripts and repeating scripts don't look natural. But that's just me. Uh, so let me go through here. Uh, but yeah, it was Chef Anton that did that. He's still fucking amazing. Uh, hello from Turkey, not the animal, the country. Uh, hello, sir. Thank you for assuming that I'm retarded <laughs> and incapable of knowing the distinction, but uh, I still appreciate that. Uh, let me see why my penis is vibrating. Oh, that's funny. Okay. Uh, somebody said memorize decks. I don't know what you mean. Uh, Shin Lim is heavy on scripts. Is that, a, is that a troll? Are you a troll? Is that what you're doing right now? Did you just, uh, did you just get me? I feel like I just got pranked. Shin, uh, Shin Lim is fucking man. I've, I've, I, it took me this long to watch, um, you know, his the more recent stuff. He's fucking crazy good. Let's see. Uh, thoughts on Burglar's Effect by Gon, uh, Gon Kahlo. Uh, that's fucking interesting. Uh, Burglar's Effect. It's interesting. I think that it's, um, it's not what people think it is, right? Because you know, from my memory, my understanding, uh. Burglis never had a concrete method of doing that. He just had different things and different uh, ideas, and then that kind of turned into the Burglis effect. But there's no, you know, solid method of um, of doing that same effect every time, 100%. That you somebody names a card, somebody names a number, and then that card ends up with that number. Uh, Parham says this is boring. Uh, you are a cunt. Let me just say that you're a cunt. Um, but yeah, but there's no uh, actual concrete method of doing the burglar's effect. So I don't know if people are trying to look for that, like the golden fucking, uh, the, the holy grail. But there's, that doesn't exist. Uh, so that's kind of nuts. Uh, yeah, I, I used uh, English to pronounce your name. I said Parham. I don't know if that's, um, if that's how else to pronounce that other than using the actual letters. 
Uh, let me see these other questions here. You better not forget about us when you have above 100K. You are a fag and you probably won't, but still. I appreciate that. Uh, I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, I won't forget about you, Alexandru Patrianka, uh, when I'm uh, above 100K, assuming that I don't die by the time I uh, reach 100K, if I do. Um, but I won't, uh, maybe what, but you know, it'd be great if, if, um, once I do reach like a certain plateau, I, I turn into a complete asshole. Like, uh, it's just like a different, like I put the shades on the pig cake logo and I sell out constantly. Oh, that'd be fucking hysterical. Uh, person with the unknown name. Uh, yeah, that's funny. That's what I'm referring to you, uh, you two as, because unfortunately I can't read those characters. Let me see this other shit. Uh, do you like big black dicks? Uh, depends. It has to, it's my mood. Uh, I'm already a sellout. Yeah, John Harmon. I'm already a sellout. Um, but could you imagine if I had like a sponsor? Fuck, I'd be straight up. I would be straight up fucking uh, every episode. Oh, wait, hold up. What's this? What's this message over here? Is this a, a loot crate? Is this a domain.com? Whatever the fuck they happen to um, the show. But yeah, I, I'd be, I'd sell out fast as fuck. Uh, Austin Ballinger says, I had to tell you, I fucked your mom, thus you were born. Okay, uh, that's weird. I'm going to check your channel out for that, Austin Ballinger, uh, because my mom's actually dead. So I don't know if, uh, I don't know how you feel about that. There's a couple videos of here. Uh, there's a 33 second video titled, um, oh shit, boy. Okay. All right. Uh, I mean, here you look like you're about 12. Here you look like you're about 12. Let me see. Oh, okay. This is some sort of middle school function. Okay. Uh, in order to have a child, you need to go through puberty. Um, so I doubt that you're my father because you need the ability for your body to produce uh, sperm. So uh, you need to go through it. Not to say that you probably don't have... Uh, and haven't gone, through, but I'm yeah, I'm just basing it off that one video, dog. So it'll be in, uh, you'd be incapable. You could potentially have sex with my mother, but it wouldn't lead to my creation and my inception. I don't know if that makes sense. Does that does that is that good? Is that clear? Is that good? Are we good? Okay, we're good. All right, I hope so. Uh, I want to hear that. Okay, there's some stuff happening here. Some comments. These are you guys have the best questions here. Yeah, fuck, that's funny. Uh, you guys have the best questions, man. I, I can't get over this. Uh, sifting through these comments, uh, calling me a cunt, and uh, talking about pornography. Porn is disgusting. Man, uh, you guys. Yeah, all you guys talking about pornography, that's disgusting. That's uh, Those are... Jesus. Man, yeah. Oh, boy. Let me see. I need a prediction card force. Hand envelope to person. That other people think of a card a card is an envelope you could potentially do that with a couple different things uh you could probably do that with um fuck uh there's a pocket uh tko you could do that with tko there's a way of doing that with tko uh if you look that product up tko uh elusive ctw and then there's another way of doing that potentially with a fuck who's this guy mark something I know that the Wizard product review has them all the time. Uh, he has something that he could do that with. That's like a multiple prediction. So you reach into there. And depending on how you open a particular paper, it gives a different prediction. Uh, Mark Oberon. Mark Oberon. There you go. Um, he's the one. Uh, he has something called, I think, Bang On. Uh, that's legit. Are you? you uh, someone's going off on a... <laughs> that wasn't me. <laughs> the dude on the video was me. Okay, I, I, then I would imagine that if it wasn't you, and you are of age, Austin uh, Ballinger, Ballinger, you're sad. Why are you sad? You're the one that said you had sex with my mother, dude. That's that's highly inappropriate. I can't reveal my face. Okay, yeah, that's a smart idea. That's a smart idea. Take it from this guy. Take it from. Take it from this guy. Uh, let me see. Face review or bacon? Probably bacon. Yeah, probably bacon. 
Uh, somebody says, do I do Chris Ramsey's cop? I don't know what you mean by Chris Ramsey's cop. Uh, maybe are you talking about a cop in general? Like an actual cop? Uh, who the hell would want to sponsor someone who can't even think of better intros? That's funny. Yeah, you're right, I guess. Maybe. Uh, maybe like an obscure like barbecue company maybe wants to uh, sponsor me. Uh, speaking of that, let me check your video out here, uh, Jordan Stum. It says, funniest silent video. Let's check this out. It's 2 minutes and 36 seconds. Okay. Oh, shit. You're telling me about intros, though? This is Jordan. Okay. Okay, Jordan. Oh, boy. Oh, shit. Okay. Damn, man. Oh, shit. All right, dude, I gave up on that. I'm sorry, uh, Jordan. Ah, oh, boy, I gave up quickly on that. Um, yeah, I can't, I can't say anything about you, man. I really can't. Every time I like look at one of you guys says like, hey, man, fuck you, pig cake. And then I look at your channel and you're like 12. I can't make fun of you. That goes against everything. That goes against everything that, uh, you know, that, that, that could potentially lead to me getting angry emails by parents saying, hey, are you aware that you were... Uh, showing my kids dirty words. No, what? Um, <laughs> there's nothing I expected to enjoy more than your intros. They're great. Thank you, The Squeeze. Uh, odd name, but th I, pr I still appreciate it. I still appreciate that. <laughs> hey, man, fuck you, Pig Cake. That's great. Mm. <sighs> oh, boy, you guys got these questions rolling in here. It's kind of hot. Uh... Let me see. I'm deaf. Thank you to your intros. Yeah, I, I apologize for those. Uh, actually, I don't because I think they're really, really funny. But I know you're a fat liar and I'll tell you why. Because I make sure that uh, whenever you see, I it's like when you send your friend a picture of a dick, right? Like you send him a picture of the dick, but what does that mean? That means that you have to, you have to see a dick first, right? Like you have to actively go through your Google. You have to search up pictures of dicks and then you have to uh, save it and then send it right? So it's the same thing. It's the same thing with my, uh, the ear rape. Uh, I have to hear it before I publish it, right? Before I like export it, I have to hear it. So I hear it just as much as you guys hear it. Uh, and I know that I have it at negative four, uh, in terms of audio levels. So there's no way that you could get deaf from that dog, unless you have the world's most sensitive ears, of which case you should be in the Guinness book of records, dog. So there you go. Um, Something about my thumb. I just saw a comment pass by about my thick thumb. That's fucking weird. Uh, can I get a close-up? Uh, oh, okay. There you go. That's fucking weird. That's... Yeah, I gotta tell you. These are... Uh, somebody says... I oh, I can't hear you. That's funny. <laughs> You're rolling with it. Uh, okay. I appreciate the humor there. Uh, what do you think of Mr. Leonard Green's laser deal? Michael Puig? I think it's great. It's a fantastic move. Um, my mic is muted? Really? Is it? Can you, can you hear me? Can you, is, is this happening right now? Penis. Can y'all hear me or no? Oh, trolled. Did I just get trolled? Oh, you're a piece of shit. I just got pranked right now. You fucking piece of shit. I just got pranked. You fucking cunt. Anyways, I do like Leonard Green's, uh... <laughs> Fucking snap deal or laser deal. I like it. Uh, and then it's funny because every time on Reddit, I see, um, I see you fucking piece of shit. I see that, uh, his, that video of him doing a, he does a snap deal, right? He, he's doing a, the whole snap deal. And then uh, he's doing with the guy holding a microphone that gets on the front page of Reddit at least once a year. And people are like, Oh my God, this is crazy. How is he doing that? And it, literally every year you could trace it back to where you see a different, uh, or the same post on Reddit over and over again. Of Leonard Green doing the, the snap deal, which is hysterical. Uh, let me see. Have you seen a subtle shift? I haven't seen it. Uh, I know last time you mentioned that. Uh, Vuglalik. I haven't seen that yet. Uh, are you the pig in the intro that gets fucked? Yeah. Yeah, that's, uh, I'm actually the one doing the fucking. Because I'm, I'm not, not gay. I'm not gay. Oh, boy. Okay. Could you tell there's a carpet? Uh, now that I see that comment, uh, uh, Spillos, P. Spillios. 
because funny enough, uh, the person that got me this is a, um, or well, the person that got me this got me a, uh, this is a bath mat. I didn't realize that it was a bath mat. I thought that it was a, like, um, first I thought it was some sort of weird close-up pad, but then I wouldn't have no idea as to where you would find a close-up pad that looks like this. And then I realized, oh, this looks like it was literally bought on Wish.com. One of those uh, awful fucking Asian websites where you pay $2 and you get a, they'll give you a child, they'll send you a child. You're like, how did, how could they afford this? So uh, yeah, that's funny. Uh, let me see these other ones. See if there, I missed anything here. Oh boy, let's see. Okay, that's hot. Uh, what's the other trick I put out this week? Um, I put something out that was pretty dope. Oh, the time trick that somebody said, hey, call it the clock trick. Uh, I like that idea. That's a really good one. Because uh, pretty much for that, you are using, wait for it. Uh, you're using uh, the two key card principle. So instead of using one key card, you're using two key cards. And that kind of tells you not only the time, for those of you that didn't see the trick, you have a uh, cards that you know. So for example, I have an ace right here and I have the other ace down here, right? And then you uh, turn around and you make sure that you pick a spectator that isn't just going to steal the very expensive uh, bicycle cards here. Um, sorry, very expensive tiger uh, tiger back deck that I'm sure no doubt went to buying Brad Christian lipstick. Uh, so they deal the cards right into whatever uh, is their favorite hour. So let's say their favorite hour is four. Then uh, they happen to look at this card, which is the six of spades. They drop it and then they give the deck one complete cut. Uh, you guys saw the instruction, right? And if you haven't, then you're a cunt and you need to check it out. But uh, I like that principle because it allows you not only to get, it gets two pieces of information. You get the actual card itself. Uh, stalker plays, love you, but have to go. Dog, you do what you gotta do. Uh, but it gets you two different, um, it gets you two different things. It gets you the, not only the information of the actual card itself, but it gets you the actual clock or the actual favorite hour. So you could, uh, you could kind of hand that up uh, however it is that you want. But I, I kind of like that principle. Uh, I know that the original one, um, I for sure, I know I didn't come up with this trick. I know I didn't. Uh, I Let me retract here. I read a trick called the, the classic clock trick, right? Where you have uh, the 13th card memorized, and then you have the spectator take a chunk of cards from the top. Like, let's say they take out four, and then they hide it. And then you deal 12 cards out. And you tell them to think of the card that corresponds to their uh, the hour, the, the amount of cards that they took out, right? Uh, that's the original trick that I first read up. I wanted to do or find out a method to do it with, uh, without having the spectator take out those initial cards. So this is the this is what I came up with, which is uh, two floating cards, uh, two floating key cards. However, I'm about a thousand percent sure that I didn't come up with this particular method. You know, just because fucking Marlowe probably came up with it, but. Uh, I still like this uh, and I prefer that sort of idea to having the spectator do this arbitrary process of removing a certain amount of cards from the deck uh, and then memorizing a card that ends up in that position. I, I don't like that. So in this, in this way, you kind of avoid that and uh, it saves you from that process. So if you haven't seen that trick, check it out. It's called uh, learn the time trick and then emotional. Uh, can someone explain to me why emotional seems to be the, the keyword that people add to the end of um, their videos now? Ha, ha, I don't understand. There's like a trend. Uh, a, you Two years ago, it was gone wild, right? Uh, or gone crazy or gone sexual. And then now it's emotional. Not clickbait. Yeah, it's fucking like, come on, man. There's a... Uh, emotional because we're deaf. I keep, I'm sorry, Greg. Uh, Bernhard. Greatest porno name of all time. Mm. Uh, do you still love us over at your Discord channel? Yeah, I read it. Um, I, I try to overlord. So every time somebody uh, calls me up and says, uh, at Piggy, I'll, I'll check it out. Um, I haven't in a while because I was uh, too busy working on this super secret project uh, this week. But yeah, uh, I, I check on it from time to time. I like to read what you guys are talking about because it's uh, fairly funny, all the, uh, all the cunt commentary. Um, and scaring the people away from there. I forgot who you who you guys scared away from that Discord chat. Uh, but yeah, okay, so that's a time trick. And then let's see what tricks I'm going to put this week. There's the, the Hummer trick tutorial. That's coming out this week. That's fucking hot. Uh, let's see. There is another one here. Learn to win at poker sometimes. That's another trick that's coming out uh, this week. Man, jeez, I got to... These clickbait titles, you really got to fuck it. You really got to fuck these clickbait titles here. 
uh, let me see this. I did an essay on clickbait, because why not? Yeah, why not? Uh, Pigcake, you said you would sub to my YouTube in the last video, Ryan Shop. Yeah, I said if you improve your quality, Ryan Shop, you keep, I think you're ignoring that. And if you, if you make a good video, I'll sub to your channel. Um, but I haven't, I haven't seen that. So, oh, Aw awkward. My, let, let's see if you did. Uh, let's check this out. I'm, I'm going to go here. I'm going to go to go to channel. I'm going to check this shit out. Mind you, this is from someone that, that, uh, that says cunt a lot. And, um, uh, let's see. So you have a deck review on, uh, cyclists. Bicycle decks, uh, the cyclist decks. Um, this is the green, and this is. The I like that you worked on your audio levels there. So what I'm gonna do is just show you guys what these look like. They're basically the same, except this is green and this one's white and blue. So. Did you say that's green? Did you say that's green? That looks yellow to me. I don't know what to tell you, man. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. I'm not a fan of deck reviews. Uh, and then I say that going uh, with the fact that if you look at my old videos, I have nothing but deck reviews, but they're all done ironically. Um, but uh, I do like that you fix your audio levels. That's always great because it's good uh, to actually hear your voice and not the, uh, the royalty-free music that's blasting over. I'm like, oh, I really appreciate that that music, um, but yeah, dude, I want to see a, I want to see a good video. I want to see a really really good video, and then I will sub. But I haven't seen it yet. I haven't seen it yet. Uh, pigs, check out my Juan Deech video. What? Did you? Is there another one? Let me see this. We are we are mining diamonds. Okay, hold up. Let me see this. Um. Uh, does this cunty carpet work? Yeah, the cunty carpet works. Uh, you could spread the cards out pretty nicely. You could do one of these, one of those, and then you're ready. If you're even if you're a show off, you could do one of these, one of those contrific things, right? So it's pretty dope. I like these. It's a nice. Uh, it has a nice feel. It feels like uh, you know what it feels like. It feels like um, uh, who's? Let me see. Who's the last person I said a cunty comment? It feels like. Who said, let me see, I'm trying to look at the, who said the last cunty comment here. Uh, let's see, somebody said, fuck, nobody, wow, you guys are too nice here. I was trying to see who was the last person that called me a cunt or the last person that, uh, that said something stupid. River Jordan? Oh, it's like River Jordan's mom. It feels like his mom's back. Um, it's a little hairy, but you know what? You still, you still rub, uh, you still rub your, your face on it because it feels good. Ha! You get because your mom, mom's back, uh, River Jordan. Your mom's back. That was a joke. I'm sorry. I I I I tend not to want to make fun of moms because all I need is someone to generally say, "Yeah, my mom's dead. You're a piece of shit. I'm reporting you." And then you know, then it's, it it becomes a little bit awkward. It becomes like uh, mommy hit uh, daddy at the dinner table, and that's trying to what uh, that's what I'm trying to avoid. Uh, that sort of um. That sort of ambiance here. Uh, let's see. Uh, did you check it out, Fag Farm? No, I haven't checked it out, dog. Uh, let me check you out on uh, Alexandru Patranka. Every time I say your name, I fuck it up. Uh, you don't have a video, you cunt. Oh, you do have a video. Okay, but this is on uh, League of Legends. Did you fucking troll me? God damn it. You fucking... You troll cunt. What's it made of? It's made, this is made of, of, um, what do you call this? Uh, fuck, I can't even, I don't even know. It's like that shitty material. Like if you ever go to a bed, bath and beyond and you fucking, you, you go for the carpet that's like two bucks and you want to buy that, that's what it feels like. It almost feels spongy. It's pretty bad. It's actually pretty bad. 
Uh, but you know what? It does the job. You could do all that. And then you could do this Rene Levan trick right here. You could do this. From the front, it looks like the card's rising. What? Huh? You could do that shit with this. So it's not bad. It's not that bad. Let's see. You don't have that annoying thing that when you pick up the deck, you see how every time you pick up the deck, I don't know how many times you, you put the deck down and then you pick it up and there's like 27 cards um, just on the fucking floor. Uh, John A says, only faggots go to Bed Bath & Beyond. Yeah, you're right. You like the amb ambiguity of that? You like how ambiguous that was? Uh, hey, Pig Cake, why are you giving Ireland your hurricanes? Yeah, you're fucking right. There's a fucking hurricane over there. I didn't think that was possible. I'm sorry. Well, I mean, we just got like straight up molested by a hurricane. Uh, so, fuck. Y'all getting, getting wrecked over there. Let me see. Uh, some other shit here. What's your favorite card control? I put it. I put the video of it. Um, I put the video. It's uh, it's that that oops control. So you have the uh, bottom card reversed, right? You have somebody pick a card. Then they look at it. You obviously put it down right here. And then you're you're free pretty much at this point. You say, oh, you know, your card's somewhere in the deck. You let me just shuffle this up. Wait, what's that? Oh, sorry about that. I, that happens all the time. I, let me just get this deck and mix up. And then the cards on top, right? That's 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 my favorite control. It's the uh, the oops control. I put it on the. Uh, I think I titled it my favorite card control, because why the fuck not? Uh, but I again, the tips I give on that one is that you want to use a, a joker. And then somebody even mentioned it uh, that it's a variation on the prophecy move, which it is uh, a little bit, but. Um, so you have a card picked in this case, right? Five of diamonds. This joker is over here. You put it down uh, on it. You could give the deck a couple cuts at this point. Uh, but once you spread the cards, you can notice the joker and go, oh, whoops, sorry about that. And guess what? Cards on top. Obviously, that was a special case because I cut the joker to the top. But uh, let's assume you don't cut to the joker. Joker's face up above your card. You go, oh, sorry about that. And guess what? Now your card's on top. And all you did to, to supposedly turn the card over. What? How fucking nuts is that? That's fucking hotness. Uh, but the oops control is obviously, that's, uh, it's not mine. Uh, it's a variation on something I saw that it's uh, Daryl did. Daryl Martinez, RIP OG nigga. Can I say nigga? Uh, RIP OG, OG cracker, I guess. He was Puerto Rican, wasn't he? Daryl? If somebody could answer that, one of the people that are actually uh, well-learned. Uh, magicians that are knowledgeable of the history was uh, Daryl Puerto Rican. I know that he was Latin, but I don't know what um, particular ethnicity Daryl was from. Uh, obviously, Daryl Martinez, and he does have a book called Secrets of a Puerto Rican Gambler. So I assume he's Puerto Rican. So, yeah, boy. Um, but yeah, he's. Uh, I got it from one of his uh, tapes, uh, and obviously, I made my little variation on it. So there you go, uh, Cromulon, aka a floating head. Uh, let me see. Do a tutorial where you're only whispering. That's going to attract a weird crowd, though. That's going to attract uh, a weird, definite crowd. I don't want to get that ASMR crew. Mm. I remember, I think, one of the videos that I put up about, um, the, I did, like, an ASMR card trick or whatever, and then the comments were just littered with people that are definitely, uh, definitely in there for the ASMR, and they got really disappointed. When it wasn't ASMR. I find that whole thing to be creepy as shit, honestly. Fuck. Like, your crowd isn't already weird. Yeah, but it's weird in a good way. Like, uh, I think the, the people that are attracted to my videos are people that uh, don't take themselves too seriously, number one. Uh, that they enjoy uh, cunt, like, words like that. And they're interested in magic. I think if those are, if you have those three, that triangle, that trifecta from fucking hell, if you have uh, those uh, those things, then you are you enjoy my videos. But if you don't, then you know, I got a I got a comment. I think I put it on Twitter that somebody's like, oh, this trick would be a lot better without the homophobia. Why? Why would it be better without the homophobia? I think it's better with the homophobia. You sprinkle in some some foam, uh, some. I was gonna say homophobia in there. You sprinkle in some of that, and then the trick comes instantly better. Man, people don't know. <coughs> like I, you, you tell you do a card trick without rampant racism. 
That was a joke, by the way. You don't need to put racism in card tricks. Uh, but I'm just saying it for the humorous aspect. But yeah, somebody somebody did leave a comment about that. And I find that funny because like, ah, obviously I don't mean that. It's a joke. Right? People, people are too sensitive these days. They get offended way too easily. So, I don't know uh, what got me on that tangent. Uh, your videos suck, Derby Potatoes. See, at this point, I feel like you're just saying that, so I look at your shit. Ah, uh, you fucking trolling me here. You're making me look at your shit here, Derpy Potato. Uh, okay, you have videos here, Derpy Potato. You got some face swap videos. Uh, you got the Bieber haircut from 2012. That's weird. Uh, but let's see what else you got here. You got a uh, stress-filled rant, and then you got another rant, and then you got update, because why not? Uh, let's see this. Hey, I suck. All right. Sup, guys? Um, I haven't made a video in a while, because I don't have enough space to do it. Hey. I probably won't have enough space to film this short Somebody called you a fuckboy here. That's not cool. Can't do jack shit. Anywho, I'm going to leave it there. And that was weird. That was weird, dude. I gotta tell you, that was weird. Uh, um, uh, I mean, you do you, derp. You, uh, you do you, der derp. But get off. <laughs> get off. That's funny. Um, well, I'm sorry, man. You you called me out. I I think you you troll baited me here. Of course, I'm gonna look through your shit. Uh, and judge you a little bit, like just a teeny tiny bit. Can you look at my shit? My one YouTube video shit? Yeah, why not? Why not, Welly Sakia? Psycut? Uh, let's look to your shit here. You have magic in Glasgow. Uh, let's check this out. Random magic here. It's five minutes. Let's check this shit out. Okay. Nice zoom in with Jack of Diamonds. I like it. Dude, you're, you're kind of a stud. I'm not going to lie. And you got the deck out. Oh, shit. You got the Madison. You got that cinematography on point. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. A little bit of jitter on the camera there, but that's that I, I'm appreciating it here. A random magic compilation. Oh, shit. I like that flex game you got going. I like that flex game, dog. Right now you're doing a fan, but I know what you're really doing. You're holding that, you're, you're getting that flex game on hard as shit. I see that. That's fucking dope. Of course, you have the Madison. That's funny. All right, let's see this shit. Oh, shit. You got some fucking action. You got some slow motion action here. Oh, shit. Okay, now you got some B thing. Yeah, but it's, it's, it's... I've seen like a thousand of these videos, though. You know what I would like? I'd like if somebody made a compilation of magic videos and uh, halfway through, somebody shoots you like in the head and then the rest of the video. So like the first minute is actual cardistry and, you know, some like card shit. Uh, and then at some point in the video, somebody comes and shoots you and then you just fall down on the ground and then it's literally you on the ground for like five minutes. How fucking funny would that video be? I'd fucking die watching a video like that. But they make it like, oh, a magic compilation. And it's a guy like doing this shit. He's like, oh, like, oh, shit. Oh, shit. And then somewhere in the video, face shot, shot right in the face, passes out, and then dies. And then the last five minutes, or you know what? If you want to stretch it out to 10 minutes and get that hot, hot, juicy um, monetization tip, then you just let it go to 10 minutes. Pull a rice gum. All right. It doesn't fucking matter at this point. And then you, you that'd be, oh, man. That'd be hysterical. I'd laugh. Or at some point, somebody just drops your cards. Like you're doing this shit in the street. Somebody just comes by and drops your cards on the floor. And then you just stay there like this with your hands open, just looking at the deck for five minutes. Just like this. I'd watch the shit out of that video. You know, I'd watch each minute of that video. So I'm saying to change it up, something like that. I've seen too many... Uh, magic like compilations in front of a uh, hot um like nice cinematography places like oh i'm gonna i'm gonna be in front of a building not to say that you're not good because clearly you have skill um but uh welly but i'm saying like i've seen too many of those so i i want somebody to change it up 
be the first one in there that gets shot. Obviously, I, you don't want to actually get shot. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Be the, John A. Be the first one to use a black and white filter. Fuck, like that hasn't been done to death already. You know what we need to bring back from the, st the glory days of YouTube? AMVs. Somebody needs to do a hot AMV to like, um, to, uh, the, what's that song by fucking Linkin Park? They need to do a hot AMV to like, um, just sh <laughs> wait till your next live stream and your dreams will be realized. Yeah, definitely. If you make that video, just <laughs> let me know. <laughs> DM me on Twitter or something or whatever. Slide into my DMs. Um, but I, I want to see somebody do a video like that. I, I would fucking, I'd be very, very funned out. Uh, let's see. I, I did a card trick at the retirement home and called the ladies a bunch of dried, dusty cunts. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think you're going to get much uh, booking there. Um, unfortunately. If you call crusty old ladies, uh, like John A says, Jay Sankey is cute. Yeah, I agree. I, I agree. Jay Sankey is uh, pretty cute. Um, it's like a little, you just want to rub his head. Like, I just want to go, oh my God, Jay, sit on my face. Uh, I, I love Jay. Um, let me see. What is the most useless slight you've practiced? Your mom. I'm kidding. Not your, that's such a, oh boy. This is a great live stream. Uh, what is the most useless slight? Ah, fuck. That's a hard. That's a hard one. Cause now I have to think of slights and shit that I've learned, and that I haven't done. You know, honestly, I don't know because I don't typically learn shit that I don't do or don't need or don't. Like if I see like a move that I'm like, okay, no, thank you. I'm not gonna learn it because if I don't have a function for it, I'm not gonna learn it. I'm not like a move monkey, so I don't uh, particularly like learning moves just to learn them. I like learning them for the, the functional aspect of it. So if I'm going to learn something, it's going to be for the, uh, the actual performance of it. I'm not going to learn a move that's just, um, you know, boring. A uh, one-handed riffle. Yep, yeah, done that. I don't know if I could do it with this deck, but... There you go. One-handed riffle, dog. Uh, yeah, that is kind of useless. You're right. Uh, but it's a good little fidget move, right? It's like a little, good little... You just fucking fidget around uh, with that. A little bit, but it's not a, yeah, but that's, even that's not useless because that has a, that has a couple different uses. Like if you want to, for example, if you want to start a trick and you do the little, the little cute powder point of being like, yeah, uh, so I don't want you to think that I do things with like skill or whatever. You know, I'm, I'm really not that good when it comes to card magic. I just, uh, the thing is that people tend to think that I'm using sleight of hand, but I'm really not. I'm using actual magical ability. You know, you do some little gay thing like that. Uh, obviously while mixing the cards up in a way that shows that you have zero life you know that that has a function in a, in a routine something like that uh let me see let me see some other shit here oh shit uh do you do any magic that doesn't use cards yeah i have a couple on the channel i have a couple on the channel they're pretty good i would say i'm tooting my own horn um but uh i have a couple do you like Daniel Garcia? Yeah, I love Daniel Garcia. He's fucking hot. He hasn't come out with anything in a while that's actually like for the magic community, but um, I would definitely uh, enjoy it if he would come out with something else. Mm. I saw recently that he did some episodes uh, with Scam School, and that was fucking amazing. The ones that he did on Scam School were really, really good, the tricks that he showed there. Uh, I'm actually a kid. I'm not 18 yet. My mom... Or my parents thought it would be a good thing for me to go to a therapist because th cause teenage and shit. Too bad the name had it for me. The rapist got me wrong. Okay. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. Oh, boy. Gotta get some hot fucking people here. Uh, let me see some other shit. Use the Chris Angle cards. Does, does Kurt Angle have a brother that I'm not uh, aware of? Does he? Kurt Angle? Does Kurt Angle have a brother? Somebody said, uh, do you like Rich Ferguson? I do, but I don't. I do because he's really skilled and he's really good and he has great ideas, but I don't because sometimes he says and does things that are pretty cringy. I remember I bought that first uh, video, This is Mentalism by Illusionist, a couple years back about, uh, about Rich Ferguson, and I'm like, fuck, this guy's really good. Uh, he's fucking amazing. He's good. He's talented. He comes up with good ideas. But at the same time, uh, then he was performing a couple of times. And I saw in a, a, a little bit of those performances that he just kept talking and talking. And then the people in the audience were visibly like shifting around. They were kind of like uh, not 100% into it. 
Uh, I felt like if he would have straight up gone into the stuff a little bit harder and a little bit quicker, they would have been more entertained. But then obviously at the end, you know, they are like, oh, yeah, fuck. They reacted accordingly. It's not like they were bored. But during it, I felt like he, he had too much, too much of the pattern that it was like, I'm going to try to assess you psychologically, all right, using my, my skills as a, uh, as a mentalist. So just sit down over there. Just look at me. Run. And it's like he went through this whole thing and he spent like maybe two minutes building it up. And uh, I think he did some bit with a paperclip or something. But I, ju I just remember looking at the audience and then uh, there was somebody that looked, or a couple people that didn't look like they were into it. Uh, but apart from that, I think he's great. Uh, how'd you start YouTube? I made videos. I made videos. I started making videos. That's how I did. I got a camera. This, this camera, funny enough, which is a uh, Samsung Galaxy S7, right? With a wide angle lens. If I take off the wide angle lens here, I could actually unscrew it, but I'm not going to. Um... Daniel Garcia signed my deck. Do you want it? If he signed your deck, I'd want it. Uh, but yeah, but I I just started making videos. I remember I had the idea. I just, I got like a really nasty headache. And then I just had nothing to do but to think. So I just thought of a channel. Uh, pretty much what I've said before is I wanted to do Miss Mag on crack. Miss Mag A22. I miss you, Miss Mag. Uh, Miss Mag A22 on crack. Uh, that's what I wanted to do. It's like something like... A, like a parody of uh, typical magic tutorials. Uh, and then that's kind of what I ended up doing for those first couple episodes. Uh, and then I, I, I started doing tutorials, but I think that mine are a little bit different than the other ones. Um, so, yeah. Uh, Miss Mag, where you at? I'm not gay. Uh, you thought I was Miss Mag. No, no, I'm not Miss Mag. Uh, definitely not. I wish I was. Um, but yeah, I miss the Miss Mag. Hashtag bring back Miss Mag. Let me see. Uh, somebody says, could you teach us that math lesson trick? Yeah, but it's hard. It's, it's a little bit hard because you need a bunch of, um, it's like a, you need the setup and then you do need the uh, Louis Simonoff uh, flip it move. And then uh, you're doing the, uh, the, the face up startler, right? You're doing that shit uh, to break off the card into two. Um, so it's just a combination of a lot of stuff. Uh, let me see, two. And then the ace, let me see where the three is. But you're pretty much combining a lot of stupid little things in that math routine. Uh, but it's not really anything that you can't figure out. How do I, am I retarded? There you go. Okay, make sure the pip is face up. But it's something like this, right? This was one of the color changes there. Now you kind of split the, the three into two twos. Um, the one that I do particularly like is the Marlo, uh, that Marlo switch, which is just a beautiful switch. Obviously that's not <laughs> fucking, that's not uh, a good angle, and that's I didn't do it well there. But that switch, uh, it just looks like the card is dropping on the table. It's, it's a beautiful switch. Uh, but I'm sure I'll do a tutorial eventually on that. Uh, who asked me? Who asked me? Who asked me? Uh, Marcos Balise. Yeah, yeah, I'll probably end up doing that uh, somewhere down the line. But, um, I mean, just try to figure it out. That's kind of the best part. If there's a performance, just try your best to figure it out. I'm sure you're going to come up with a better method to do it or your own method or something like that. Uh, do you roll your toilet paper in your hand or ball it up? A god of cows. Uh, who balls it up? What animal balls it up? Uh, his real name's Jay. I think that's uh, not hard, Austin Ballinger. He calls himself Jay Miss Mag. Uh, but yeah, who balls it up? What kind of an animal balls up toilet paper, dude? Is the Marlo Tilt the best move ever? Might be. I don't like it uh, that much. I really don't. There's a couple. I like the. I like doing it under. Um, but I'm, I'm not a huge fan of the Marlo Tail. I'm really not. Uh, there are subtleties that make it good and make it a good move, but, um, uh, let's see. I, I thought of an idea of a re reverse tilt. I remember I have that written up in one of my notebooks, a reverse tilt. So let's pull a card out. I'm sh fucking great. I shouldn't say that because now somebody's going to be like, oh, I came up with this idea. Uh, but I'm, I, I'm definitely not. You know, the first thing of that, but uh, instead of, you know, sticking a card in the back to make it look like it's going in the deck, uh, pull the card out and make it look like it's coming from the middle. I'm sure I'm not the first to come up with that. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I have that written up in one of my notebooks from a couple years ago, reverse tilt. I think I had, a, uh, it, you did it with aces. It was really, it was like a weird convoluted method uh, from what I remembered. Uh, I think if I remember correctly, it is, um, can you solve a Rubik's Cube? I think I've answered this before. My, my go-to when somebody says, can you solve a Rubik's Cube is, no, I want to get pussy. Uh, 
And you can't do both of those at the same time, unfortunately. Um, but I forgot. I think the method I had was something that uh, you... It was... Fuck. I remember I wrote this up years ago. It was really bad. Um, but it was pretty much... I remember it. It was a variation of that Di Vernon trick where he's putting the cards like this back. He's, he's putting the aces back like this. Uh, and he's doing that for each pile. And then at the end, you do a reverse tilt and pretend like you're just taking the aces out of nowhere. Uh, it was something like that. It was a weird routine. And then there was another way of doing it from a palm. So obviously you uh, you palm the aces off. Jesus, I wrote some fucking awful ideas back in the day. Uh, but let me see if I remember it correctly. Where's the other ace? Son of a bitch. There it is. Uh, but yeah, you palmed off. You palmed off the aces, obviously, the worst palm ever. Uh, but you palm the aces off. You have the deck shuffled. They shuffle it back. You take it back, right? And then you go, I'm going to find the aces here. Let's see. I'm going to try to find the aces. You shuffle one card on top of it, and then you do the reverse tilt. And uh, then it ends up looking like you just reach into the deck and pulled out the aces. It was one of those. It was an awful routine. It really was. Uh, but I remember writing it up under the context of something like that years ago. Uh, so who asked me about the tilt and that went off into a tangent for like 20 fucking minutes? Let me see. Uh, what do I think of Chris Ramsey? I like Chris Ramsey. I've said that before. I'm a, I'm a fan of Ramsey. Uh, that's Ram fan. Is that what he calls the people? Ram fan? I guess, right? I'm a Ramsey fan. Uh, somebody says raw sauce. Somebody says raw sauce. No ketchup. Are you referring to using ketchup as lubrication? I got a pussy with a fire wallet. Like, did you actually hit it with the fire wallet? Or did you use the fire wallet to get you vagina? You got to be clear. You got to be clear, dog. Uh, can you do the truffle shuffle? Probably, yeah. Um, but I don't like doing a truffle shuffle. I have another one that I did. That somebody called me out on the other day. They're like, oh, that's a really shitty false shuffle. Uh, but I like the I like my version. Um, uh, has Evan Era tried to contact you? No, no, he hasn't. Uh, and I would love for him to. That'd be amazing. That would actually be really funny. I think that'd be a really interesting video, me and Evan Era. Uh, but he's never, um, he's never really contact me you got me into magic thank you enchanting adventure thank you dog thank you you're uh you're the reason i keep doing this yeah it's you you in particular that's right i'm, I'm literally touching your comment right now i'm touching your comment i hope that, that we're establishing some sort of connection by me touching your comment uh but yeah but uh thank you man i appreciate that i'm glad i'm the reason that you did magic Hopefully uh, this doesn't le this doesn't lead you to a life of being uh, isolated. Uh, let me see some other shit. Uh, Marcos, oh, I'm a teacher and I'll try to do it in my other classes. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, you got my email, right, Marcos Balise? Yeah. Uh, send me an email and then I'll just tell you the method. I mean, it's not really a hard method, but it is going to be really hard. So it's not one of those tricks that you could do just like off the bat. It's not like a self-working trick, um, but uh, yeah, send me an email. And I'll definitely let you know, like all the slides and all the little, all the different moves. But I mean, it's it's that star will change. Uh, it's the flippant move. It's uh, what else do I do? And it's the Marlow um, visual retention switch. So it's it's all those moves pretty much combined into one fat little hot routine. Uh, show or teach loops a thing. I don't think I can without having Yagao Masika uh, get in my asshole. So, unfortunately not. Uh, let me see some other stuff here. Uh, fuck me, I'm dumb, said Austin. That's funny. Uh, what do you think of autism? I think it's funny uh, sometimes. But everything's funny sometimes. Um, let's see. Love your tutorials. It's helped me out a lot. Golf Nut. First of all, that's an amazing name, Golf Nut. Uh, thank you, man. I appreciate that my tutorials have helped you out a lot. I hope that you're not only using my tutorials and that you are also investing in books and or uh, watching other cunty magicians show their stuff. Uh, but thank you. I, I really appreciate that you have been inspired by my cuntiness. Also, you, Flame Gaming. I, I hope that that's not some sort of weird... Uh, 
sort of gay joke, like gay flaming, flame gaming. I don't know. Uh, what's a good book? Expert Card Technique. It's a fantastic book. Um, uh, Roy Road. I've heard it's a... <laughs> no, nah, no homo. That's funny. Uh, Roy Road is another great book. Um, anything by Hubert and Browie is phenomenal. Uh, believe it or not, Magic for Dummies. Fuck, that's one book that's everyone fucking neglects. Like, that book is phenomenal. Um, Art of Astonishment. That'd be fucking dope. Let me see. Uh, some other shit. If they knew how you did every... So Tim Brokima says, if they knew how you did every single trick, would you still perform for them? That's a really shitty world, man. If they're like, yeah, I know that. I know that. One thing that I do hate is when people say, I know how you did that, and they don't know how you did that. Or they give you some sort of retarded explanation. Um, so they'll be like, man, I know what you did. I know what you did. My favorite move is this. This is my favorite thing ever. You do this. You pick a card, right? They take a card out. This is my, oh boy, fucking triggered right now. They pick a card, right? They look at it and they go, I already know this trick. I know the trick you're going to do. What? What? What if from here I, I pull a, a streamer from my penis? What? If, you don't know that. You don't fucking know that. So yeah, that's, that's my favorite uh, magical thing. Uh, pet peeve. I know people are annoyed by the, um, the whole, uh, oh, I'd hate to play cards with you. But the fucking, that one is the worst one. Oh, hey, man, I know this trick. You do from the, if they know the trick from this fucking point, you shouldn't fucking do that. They should be fucking sucking your dick. They should be just there like, oh, man, what the fuck is that? That's been, I, I've, I've had that. Uh, oh, what's a secret project? Yeah, for, I almost forgot I put that on a title. Yeah, I have a secret project uh, that is not a really secret. I'm, it's, it's, I'm going to put a demo video. <laughs> this week and then i'm gonna put it out um this week so there you go it's probably gonna be on friday uh what's this friday this friday is uh 20th yeah so october friday the 20th i should have done it the 13th but it's not really halloween related it's not really halloween related son of a bitch yeah so it's just a secret project uh the name of it is the five minus two project that's what it's called. Um, but it's definitely a, uh, a little thing I've been working on for a while. It uh, has a lot of, uh, has some tricks that I like. So I'm sure you'll enjoy it. But that's coming out on Friday. I'll put a demo video out probably Friday. So yeah, secret project. Now, is it really a secret when I fucking... Five minus two. Yeah, that's what I meant. Uh, did I, what did I say? What did I say? Five minus three? Did I say that? What did I say? Did I say five minus two? I don't know what you're talking about. Mr. Kiwi, if that's a real name, you dumb cunt. Uh, there you go. Uh, can you do your pass for us? Yeah, yeah, I could do that. Uh, even though last time I, somebody said, hey, do your pass. I got it from this angle. And then people are like, I see it. Obviously, you could see it. Um, but yeah, that's my pass. That's it. That's all it is. That's that's literally all, all my passes. Um, I like to vary it up every, every once in a while. There's a great pass by Greg Wilson called the uh, backstage pass that he does that little shit which I particularly enjoy. Um, but mostly, I'm just sticking to the classic pass with a little riff at the end. That's pretty much it. Again, from the back, you're not really getting anything special. Uh, from pretty much most angles, it's really, really good. Uh, I, you know, especially if I, I feel myself, you look down and then you're like, oh, shit. Um, but uh, yeah, there, there you go. That's that's the pass. Uh, if, I, if I really want to get dirty, I'll do the backstage pass. Or sorry, the uh, Midnight Pass by Steve Duran. That's that's one. But there's a there's a couple different hot passes. Maybe uh, add a little bit of a a little bit of a. How about that pass? Did you catch that one? No. It's the pass I made on your mom. Awesome kiwi. Yeah, Xavier has an amazing pass. He really does. He has that. Uh, I tried to learn the fucking. I I spent time. Uh, trying to learn that the cover pass that he he taught on that project, which is a phenomenal project. Um, but I just come back to the original classic pass. I really do. Uh, I think that it's obviously I'm never going to fully master it. I'm never going to fully get that. Like you're always going to have a little bit of a sound. You're always going to have a little bit of a flicker, but all you need is a millisecond. 
you know, and even if you um, even if you do it face up, uh, that millisecond could be a very visual moment. So I, I really like that. Uh, so wait, somebody says, how long did it take you to master the past? I haven't mastered it. Not even close. Um, I mean, I've done it for a long time, obviously practice it for a long, long fucking time. But uh, the past is one of those moves that you can never, ever get. You'll never, ever get it perfectly. Um, the only thing you can do is, uh, oh boy, fuck. The only thing you can do is try to just get it as close to kind of like that perfect thing as you possibly can, but it's never going to be a perfect move. But it could look pretty damn close. Um, especially with all these covers. Uh, you know, you have, uh, there's a jiggle pass. Uh, you could do that. There's dribbles to pass to cover it. You could do, um, God, what's, I saw this guy that copies my videos. I saw him do a pass in one of his videos that looked like this. He goes. So your card is lost in the middle now? I'm like, oh boy, okay. <laughs> That's uh, not subtle at all. Uh, but uh, I guess tips on it is to be consistent, really. Um, the way I've always thought of it in my head is that I am moving this packet away, right? I'm moving this packet away and letting this pass come through. And I'm trying to do that with as little space as possible. That's always been kind of my, my ideal or idea for doing the pass. Uh, so it's, it's just getting this packet out of the way enough with enough of a gap to push that little, uh, to pull this packet through. Um, obviously there are people that have different philosophies on the pass. Um, you know, obviously again, just going back to Xavier Spade's pass and all that, he has a fucking phenomenal pass, but, uh, mine is just, if I could cover it with like a line or something, I'm going to cover it with a line. I'm not trying to get one of these passes that you could fucking look at and then you don't even see anything. I'm not trying to get one of those passes. I'm trying to get a pass that's passable. You get it? Passable. No, but I'm trying to get a pass that's good enough, uh, that they don't hear it and good enough that they don't see it so uh but really that's that's just my philosophy on it but uh the uh did i jack off the cards i'm sorry uh, i don't want to offend the people that get offended by jacking off uh but th that's kind of always been my point and i remember when i was first learning it um the only i remember when i first learned to pass i was doing a herman pass and i was doing it awfully i did this i was doing this and i'm like how does this how is this good because i remember i read it in um i read it in expert card technique and then I read the mechanics of the past and I'm like, how the fuck is this ever going to fool somebody? So I just kept doing that and doing that. And I'm like, this is awful. Fuck. And then I, I, you know, read, obviously you need to do the covers for it. You do the, the turnover pass, or maybe you could do the backstage, uh, the, the, um, midnight shift. There are certain ways to cover it, uh, that little action. Uh, and then eventually I learned the, I learned the, what do you call this? The, the classic pass, uh, just to try to get one over another kid who also did magic at the school he didn't know how to do it so i fucking did it and he's like oh you fucking piece of shit um so i did that just to beat him um but yeah then obviously you just keep practicing it uh let me see some other stuff here that i have neglected have you ever thought to do a giveaway yeah i mean in the beginning i did a lot of uh i did a couple giveaways uh, i do want to do a couple obviously but i i think that they should be reserved for like milestones maybe so like if I have like a milestone, I'll, I'll probably do like a little like, oh, I'll give a couple decks um, and do that shit. Uh, let me see. Why are there a few ring trick tutorials for everyone, not just you by Robbie Thomas? Uh, I think there's, very, there's a very few things you could do with rings. Um, how much will you accept to fight Jack 120 in the ring? Like 10 bucks, dude? I don't fucking know, dude. I mean, I'd do it. If I'd fight that, if, I, if somebody said, hey, you could fight Jarek 120 in a wrestling ring. I'd do it. Fuck yeah. 100 bucks. Um, but ring tricks. There's, a, there's very few things you could do with a ring. Uh, it could either come off of something or it could jump on something. It could disappear. It could reappear somewhere else. So you have all the same effects that you could do with a coin, right? With a ring. Um, but with the ring, obviously, you're limited by the actual shape of it. So a lot of the coin slides, it's going to be limited because you, you literally... You, you see what I'm doing? My fingers right through it. See, that's kind of a, um, but obviously you have to, you know, you have to modify it for a ring, but there's very few things you could do with a ring. And, uh, that's probably why there's so few tutorials on it because why, um, because 
I mean, what else can you do? You could you could pull this out from a, uh, what about a trick with men's rings? You're really funny. Uh, you could pull this through a string. You could pull it through shoelaces, headphones, whatever. Uh, Gary Thomas has the, rings, the ring thing, which is a beautiful fucking routine. Um, but there's very few things you could do with a ring, which is why you don't see a lot of... Uh, a lot of tricks with it. And the tricks that you can do with rings, usually they're gimmicked rings. So unfortunately, um, you know, you're not gonna find a lot of tutorials on those on YouTube unless they're exposure videos. Uh, one of those fucking great things. So that's probably why you don't see a lot of uh, ring tricks uh, ex uh, explained on YouTube. Uh, how often do you practice when you started out? I started this summer. I practice in a car at stoplights. Uh, that's dangerous, but... Um, a lot, a lot. I, I had a deck in my hand pretty much everywhere I went, uh, which is a bad thing because you don't want to be that guy. Uh, now looking back on it, you don't want to be the guy with the cards all over, uh, cards all the time. Oh, that's a weird guy that has cards. Um, but I used to have cards in my hand all the time, just practicing the slights, practicing, uh, you know, the little fucking just having a pinky break, uh, getting pinky breaks. I remember practicing that a lot. Um, but... Uh, I remember when I was first learning, I think I mentioned this, my pinky break went from like this, which I thought was like natural. I'm like, oh, nobody's going to notice if I just hold my hand at this. Um, and then obviously I learned, oh, it's the flesh of the pinky that's supposed to be in there. Um, but yeah, you, you progress, uh, you know, the more you handle cards, the more you progress. I remember hearing that someone like Darwin Ortiz practiced like six hours a day. That's fucking nuts. Um, but I used to have cards on me all the fucking time. And I guess when I was younger, I was more inclined to learn more and more new things because kind of everything was new. Now, I really only like learning things that are going to help me out in terms of, um, in terms of what do you call this, uh, you know, if I, do, if, I see, if, I do, if I see in a move or a slight that's going to help me out with a certain trick, I'll learn it. But if it's just like a, a, a move that makes no fucking sense and it's just a difficult move, just for the sake of it, I'm not going to learn it. Um, I'm, I'm trying to think of an example uh, that I've seen recently. Like, there's a lot of color changes that have come out recently. Like that, I won't learn those. Uh, something like, there's a lot of ways to get cards from the middle to the top that I've seen a lot recently. I'm not going to, I mean, dude, what's, hey, there's your card. Okay. All right. Your card's now lost in the deck, right? All right. Good job. There you go. That's it. That's it. You don't need a, you don't need a fucking one of these controls that involves, hey, uh, can you, you don't need one of those. You don't need one of those, Doc. Um, so, yeah, I'm not going to learn it if I don't have a use for it. And I know that might be counter to, like, other people that just want to learn as many moves as possible. But I, I think that's just with my age. So, uh, let me see. I feel disappointed from buying your A-can. That's fucked. Well, I mean, I guess. I, I mean, I mentioned from the beginning that the, the method for the A-can wasn't for everybody. Uh, it's a bold method, that's for sure. It's one that works, uh, but it is bold. And uh, I I mean, I, I love it. I love the method. Uh, I think it's one of my favorite things that I've ever come up with. Um, but again, I've mentioned from the start that, that any card at any number, you are getting the effect where they deal the cards. They, you know, put the fucking, they deal the card. They name a card, they deal it on the table. And the card ends up on a number, but... Obviously, you have to do something to make that happen. Uh, that's something a lot of people are not willing to do because they think it's too bold. But I think it's fucking great. Um, you know, I, I think and I don't want to say <laughs> disclaimer. Fuck you, cunts. Thank you for the hot dollars. Uh, no, I mean, I, I understand. Um, obviously, I've, I've purchased a lot of magic in my time that I haven't been necessarily happy with. And obviously, I want to make sure that whatever I come out with is going to be quality enough to you know at least appeal or appease 99 percent of the people that buy it there's always going to be people that are going to be not going to like it um but i think people uh they're looking for a thing they're looking for the holy grail they're looking for something that doesn't involve any sort of subtlety any sort of anything they just want oh hey i shuffle the deck i name a card eight of spades fifth go ahead like they want that and you're not going to get that um the only thing that you could do is pretty much get to methods that are close to that. And I think I, in my particular method, I found a way that's good. You do have to do something, but that something is covered pretty much by what you're saying. At least, you know, when, if, if you say that, if you present it right, it's covered in that sense. And it really doesn't take away from the method itself, from the actual overall, uh, any card, any number. So 
yeah, boy. I mean, I, I really hope uh, you think otherwise. Like, I hope that you perform it and then that kind of changes your mind on it. But, you know, I can only do what I do, dog. Uh, can you face reveal? No, I'm not going to do a face reveal. I think I've said that before. I'm not going to do a face reveal. I don't have a face. My face is literally a ball sack. It's a pair of balls that are dangling from my forehead. So uh, it's not really... Um, it's not really a uh, a face that you could look at. It's more of like it's it's it, it'll be censored. Like if I show my face on camera, uh, YouTube would have to censor it because it looks like a pair of balls. Uh, let me see some other stuff. Have you ever been to California? I have not been to California. Uh, is your A can impromptu? Yeah, yeah, it's impromptu. Obviously, you need a whole deck because if somebody names like the Eight of Spades and your the Eight of Spades is not in the deck, then what are you gonna do? Oh, hey, your card is the only card that's not in the deck, sir. How about the number I named? My balls look like a face. So I should, should, I should show my balls, right? I should show my balls. Um, can you teach us the Orion count? You did it two streams ago. Didn't uh, Xavier do that? Xavier did the Orion count. He also taught the Roomba count. Um, you know, I, I agree with what he said about the... Uh, I agree about the Roomba count, the Jean-Pierre Valerino. It not being a particularly... Uh, pretty count, but I, I've, I've always liked it in his hands. I've always liked it, uh, the, the Roomba count in uh, Valerino's hands. Uh, I remember Reed McClintock, he's the one that did that one, which is the Orion count from my understanding, right? If I'm not mistaken. Uh, that's a beautiful one. Uh, but I, I mean, this, to me, it looks exactly like what's happening. Uh, it looks exactly like you're doing what you're doing. It just looks like you're showing the bottom card over and over again. You get me? Uh, I don't think that anything beats a good, a good, um, a good frustration count. I remember first time I saw this. The reason I actually learned this move, funny enough, uh, I bought a trick by uh, Jim Pace, who's an awful individual in every single way. Let me just get that. I can't <laughs> do a live stream without saying uh, that Jim Pace is an awful piece of shit human being. But uh, I bought the uh, web from him, and uh, I remember seeing the demo video. The web, for those of you guys that don't know, is that you have somebody hold out their hand, right? And then you put some cards and you say, oh, look, here's a spider web. And it's a blank card. And then you show all the cards that are blank and you go, wait a second. Okay. Ah. Uh. And then when you count them again, there's a web, right? And they go, oh, but there's supposed to be a spider on the web. And then all the cards now have a web. And of course, uh, you tell them, oh, why don't you wave your hand over it? And there's a, and there's a fucking spider in the back of their hand. A great trick. Phenomenal routine. Awful human being. Um, but it's a, uh, I remember I learned a frustration count from that's that little trick and it fooled me in the demo video. I was like, how the fuck do they have, does he have four cards that are blank and then four cards that have webs on them? I had no idea, uh, when I was first, uh, watching that, uh, he, look him up, <laughs> Aiden Travis, look him up. <laughs> He's, uh, in jail now, uh, for a, uh, really disgusting reason, so. But yeah, but uh, I, Xavier Spade has a good video on that. You should watch his. But I, I like the Orion count. I like the Orion count. Uh, and I'm not necessarily too opposed to the uh, the Roomba count. I'm not super opposed to it. But I could see why it's not necessarily a count that everybody wants to do. Let me get that fucking card. I could see why it's a count that not everyone would want to do. Um, there's another one. Uh, I think uh, Boris Wild has one, right? That's like this. Something like that, if I'm not mistaken. I, I just murdered it, but I, I think Boris Wad has one called the Kiss Count. There's a bunch of really, really pretty ones. Uh, let's see. Oh, fuck. That's a good question. Uh, Theron Kane. My God, it's got to be Kane. Okay. Uh, do you have any suggestions for a beginner coin trick that I'm teaching a class tomorrow? Uh, Einstein's, the trick that fooled Einstein. That's a great one. You can look that up. <clears throat> you'll find tutorials on it it's the um, you have a pile and they have a pile of coins and then you say uh you know i'm willing to bet that i have exactly the amount of coins that you have uh but i have enough to make three dollars and twenty cents uh, i you know if you look up the scam squad episode there's a great explanation for it by brian brushwood he explains it really well that's a good one uh there's another one on uh there's this classic trick where you have a pile of coins on a table and then they flip over coins and then they put their hand on one and then you're able to tell them what side it's on. Uh, you're turned around the entire time, but when you turn around, you're able to tell them uh, if it's heads or tails. That's a great one. Um, there is another one. Fuck. I'm trying to... Th there's one that's fucking good. 
Uh, there is one by Johnny Thompson that he does a story about sheep or some shit. It's on Magic for Dummies. He has, a, it's like seven coins, and then he picks them up in a certain way, and then all of them disappear and end up on one hand. It's, it's a, that's a great one. Uh, I remember reading it up on Magic for Dummies, but that's, that's another one. Uh, but definitely look up the, fool, the, the trick that fooled Einstein, and then definitely look up uh, the one that, um, fuck, I don't know what to call it. I know Martin Gardner wrote that one up. But look up the one that the trick that fooled Einstein. You'll you'll that one for sure. If you're doing it for like a class, that will great. Mm. Let me see. Um, <laughs> if you die in the next video, would you subscribe? <laughs> uh, if you maybe if you lived in the United States, because uh, if it made me laugh hard enough, I'd be like, yeah, I'd send you a deck. But if you live overseas, unfortunately, it's it gets expensive as shit to ship over decks. See, because I used to do the giveaways. And then it's like, okay, give me your address. Oh, you live in fucking Beirut. That's great. Okay, thank you. They laugh at me at the post office because uh, you'd have to claim, obviously, when you ship something overseas, you have to claim the price of the deck. So the deck, I'll be like, oh, the deck was four bucks. Okay, the, the shipping will be 1340 or the shipping will be 20 something. I'm like, oh, thank you. Uh, but yeah, so yeah. Somebody says, oh, I recently learned the five to 500 trick, but I can't hide the packet. Uh, the extra cash keeps slipping. What do I do? If you're using, you gotta use crisp bills. First of all, you gotta use bills that are pretty crispy uh, from my understanding. I, I remember learning the original, United States of England, that's funny. Uh, I remember learning the original one by, he's a, oh, fuck, he's an Irish guy. What's his name? He died too. Uh, Oh my goodness, something, fuck, somebody help me, old Irish magicians, he invented the 1 to 500 trick, so that you have a stack of 1, and then you turn it into like a stack of 5 $100 bills, he's the one that originally, Patrick Page, son of a bitch, Patrick Page, there you go, uh, yeah, so Patrick Page, I remember reading that original method, and then there's, uh, there was Hundy 500 with Greg Wilson, and then there's Einstein 500. Um, but the original one, it's the same shit as all of the other ones that came out. It's, it's a difficult thing to hide that fat packet. It really is. Um, but I think the best thing that I remember doing it when I made it up was to use very crisp bills. Um, because that way they fold nice and neatly. So you could hide that thick packet. Uh, do you have any tricks for a crush? Yeah, your uh, rising one trick. Yeah, you, you rise your what? It's your penis. Uh, Jay Sankey had it, right? Yeah, he just looked at Jim Pace as a fucked up guy. Um, Jay Sankey had a whole DVD set called Firestarters, which was pretty cringy, I'm not going to lie. Uh, but he had a whole DVD set called Firestarters on uh, tricks for like um, picking up chicks. It was pretty, pretty cringy. The tricks were phenomenal, but the pattern was pretty... Like he does a trick where he has a two of hearts. Right, and then he uh, he draws a heart over one, and then he draws a heart over the other one, and then he does a little bit of a move, a little bit of a move, and then the hearts link, and then he's like, "That could be us," I'm like, ugh. So the tricks, don't get me wrong, were amazing and pretty visual, but the, just the whole premise was pretty pretty cringy. Uh, let's see some other stuff here. Scam School does a square trick with four people. Yeah, Scam School has a lot of coin tricks. So if you really have uh, if you a uh, cane, Theron Kane. Uh, if you really need a, a, a repository of good coin tricks, just look at Coin Magic Scam School, and you're gonna find a lot of good shit. Uh, but the, the the Einstein trick is really good. Um, there was actually, you know, funny enough, I read a method by Martin Gardner recently with playing cards. Uh, Martin Gardner had um, Campbell Hopkins. I pronounce it correctly. Uh, he had a trick with playing cards, the trick that fooled Einstein with playing cards. And then I saw a method by John Bannon where he does the, the Einstein trick with cards, and then he produces the aces at the end, which is really, really a nice little touch. Uh, let me see. Let me see some other shit. Let me see some other shit. Uh, is it weird that I want to see David Blaine's classic pass? Uh, he has a couple tricks that he does uh, some street magic, and um, he, he does a pass. I remember that shit. He does a straight-up pass. Um, he was doing like some impromptu stuff with some uh, some memorized deck work, and then I you see it, you see fucking he just goes ah and then hits it, 
And I was like, oh, damn. And the funny thing is that he was surrounded and nobody saw it. So I was like, oh, motherfucker. I remember I saw, I also watched, was watching a Mind Freak fucking like eight years ago. And I see Chris Angel do a pass and they didn't cover it. So like they didn't edit out of it. So they didn't turn to another angle. You just see him go, hey, and then do it. And I'm like, oh, okay. All right. Uh, somebody missed that in the uh, cutting room floor. Let me see. Uh, some other shits. Uh, have you ever had to remove a comment because it was too offensive? No. No. Uh, I don't think I've ever removed a comment. I'm trying to think now of any comment that I've ever removed. I've never, I don't think I've ever removed any comment ever. Uh, finally, I found a mobile stream with below 100 people. All right, dude. I don't know what that means. Thank you, Tisma, whatever. What, how do you pronounce your name? What is Tism Karkably, uh, Bastifludge. Did you just hit your keyboard? Did you hit your keyboard to come up with a, or am I being offensive? And that's an actual, your actual name. And I'm just being a piece of shit. Show magic, please. Can you see that? Can you see how I did it? Let me see if I could show. Let me see if I could show a hot trick. Uh, what can I show? What can, oh, I got one right here. Look. Oh, shit, roasted. Sorry, that was not good. That wasn't good at all. I apologize. I apologize. I could show you guys a trick. I could show you guys uh, something that I actually, I was reading it today in my notebook, and I'm like, that's a really good one. Uh, didn't you remove that one that was really racist? Oh, yeah, yeah, there you go. You're right. Yeah, there was a comment that was just exceptionally racist. Um, and that was, I, I couldn't. I couldn't keep that. Uh, don't get me wrong. I don't get easily offended. I didn't get offended at all, but some people might. So I'm like, ah, let me just take that off. But the guy was saying something about Nazis and and, uh, and niggers. So I was like, ah, I need to take that one out. Uh, so here, oh, I've seen it. You piece of shit, God of Cows. Uh, so for this trick, you have them shuffle the cards. I'll just tell you guys how to do it. Um, it's a it's a dual reality sort of thing, right? Uh, so this, I, I, I was reading that up in one of my old ass notebooks, and I'm like, that's a fucking good idea. Uh, so you have the cards mixed. Right, you have the cards mixed. And then when you take them back, you go, oh boy, man, this is a really good deck. Boy, this is mixed as shit. I've never seen anyone mix the deck this bad. And what you're doing is you're looking at the top three cards and you're using your little noggin to memorize these top three cards, right? So you got the two of clubs, queen of clubs, jack of diamonds. So you're memorizing those top three cards and you say, oh boy, I don't know how I'm gonna even do this, but you know what, I'll do it anyways. Uh, so you, you're gonna put the cards out behind your back and behind your back, uh, you're going to have a spectator go there uh, behind your back. And what you're going to do is you're going to turn over these three cards and you're going to say, I want you to look at one of these cards. This is what you're saying in person. Uh, so there, imagine you have this behind your back. The audience is here. This person is looking at only three cards. But you're saying, I want you to look at one of these cards. You got one? To the rest of the audience, it looks like you, you're kind of implying that you're doing this behind your back. That you're showing them a lot of cards. But really... They're only showing three cards, right? I know how to break my thumb. That. Uh, but yeah, but you're showing them three cards. And you say, think of one of those cards. All right? I want you to think of one of those cards. And then you turn them over. And then obviously you bring the deck back out. Uh, so you have a dual reality bit at this point. You have the audience that thinks that they have just seen a bunch of cards. And they're thinking of one. This person over here has only seen three cards. Uh, and they're thinking of one of these cards. And you know the identity of these three cards. So now all you got to do is fish for it. Or you could do a little bit of a multiple outs bit. Um, you could do a, uh, you could name one of the cards. You do the Darren Brown bit, right? So you do the Darren Brown bit where you say, oh, just think of what, think of your card, say it over and over in your, in your head, say it over and over, like two of clubs, two of clubs, just like that. If that's the card that they're thinking of, got him. They're going to react. And of course, they're going to, they're going to go nuts. Uh, if that's not the card that they think of, that they're thinking of, then what you do is you could do a little bit of a dual reality bit. Two of clubs on top of the deck, so obviously you want to lose that. Uh, you could have the spectator cut the cards, and you do the um, you do a bit by John Bannon uh, that's like using a cross cut to uh, to have two outs. Uh, you could do a bit like that, or um, you could pretty much pretend to mix the deck up, and you uh, you have them name whatever card you're thinking of, and then you're able to produce it. So if you know that the top card is the Queen of Clubs, or sorry, if you know that yeah, if you know the top card is the Queen of Clubs, and they say another card you know that it's going to be this one, 
right? So pretty much what I'm saying at this point is that you have streamlined, uh, you're streamlining the audience's perception of what's going on here. The audience thinks they're thinking of any card. You know, they're only thinking of one out of three potential playing cards. So from there, you could fish, you could find the cards however it is that you want. You could do multiple outs. There's a lot of different things that you could do at that point. Uh, so I think that's a really, really good idea. Uh, I do like the, the fishing idea. So name the card out loud. Say it over and over again. Uh, two of clubs, two of clubs. If they don't react at that point, then I know it's the other two cards. So I could say, oh, are you thinking of like, um, is it a red card? And they say no. I go, I'm, so, I'm sorry. Uh, okay, then I guess fuck that. Uh, say, say your card. Oh, queen of diamonds. You know, you're just pretty much doing some basic fishing to get the card. But the perception is phenomenal because these people think that they have any that they have a fucking option they could have thought of any card in a deck uh this person behind you they get a little bit less of an effect because they're only thinking of one of three cards but it's still a really good effect uh nevertheless so that that's uh that's just a quick trick <laughs> that you could try uh quit saying subs now i'm hungry i don't know who said subs uh somebody asking for subs that's weird. Somebody's who's asking for subs. Mm. Um, what do you think of Turner's A can? Is that the one that he does with Jack of Spades? Is it? Oh, the cunt in the chat. That's funny. Uh, is that the one cards with a K and a Z at the end? Is that the any card, any number that he does with the Jack of Spades? Because I know that there's one that he does where he psychologically forces Jack of Spades and he does it. Uh, he does, you know, whatever method he does to get it. And it's fucking great. Uh, will you do gaming videos? I, I have a Minecraft gaming video <laughs> that I have on the channel if you want to check that out. Um, but you better watch. Well, I, okay. There's a Minecraft video that I have on the channel. Uh, but it's really a magic tutorial. And then there's a magic tutorial that it's really a minecraft video so you got to find the right one i'm a piece of shit that's kind of what i'm trying to establish here i'm an asshole so uh you got to find the right one i think the minecraft video is called the world's greatest card trick and then uh the card tutorial is called pig cake plays minecraft yeah but the minesweeper one is actually a legitimate video of me playing minesweeper you know i still don't understand minesweeper that, that makes me a bad person. Um, wait, I know you said it before, but how did you get into magic again, say Jared MC? Uh, I, yeah, some dude told me that he was going to float that whole thing, right? I'm sure that jogged your memory. Some dude told me years ago, hey, man, I'm going to show you how to float. And then he did the bullshit levitation. He does the where he stands on a leg, right? He stands on one foot and he lifts the other leg. And I'm like, that sucks. So then he, uh, yeah, there you go. That, yeah, that's how I got into magic many years ago and now i've still been a cunt uh your patreon isn't linked to the stream you can find it on the channel i pretty much plug it every single fucking video speaking of hey if you guys want a hot method of supporting an exclusive trick you should check out up patreon.com slash pig cake with two e's because i'm a dumb cunt and i'm shilling my shit uh let's see do you think your videos are a little bit too long? I don't think so. I think some videos are too short. Um, I know that some people have claimed that I'm trying purposely to get past the 10 minute mark to get you know the ads so you can put more ads in a video. Uh, no, I, it's more by chance. Uh, it's more by chance. So sometimes the video will go under nine, sometimes they go over 10. If they go over 10, I'm gonna put ads in the video because obviously hit me up with that monetization dog. Um, but if I, uh, if I don't hit, I'm not going to extend a video past 10 minutes just for the monetization. If it just, ha it just happens to hit 10, then uh, there you go. Like it's not, I'm not going to purposely do that. Somebody mentioned that. I'm like, you dumb cunt. You don't know. You don't fucking know. Uh, favorite David Blaine release. Uh, the, I've, I mentioned this before. The Mark deck that he revealed is my favorite thing. Uh, that he's ever released. I also read his book, Mysterious Stranger. And I remember having to explain to my mom why there's a naked picture of a, of a man in the book. Because there's one of the pictures where he's butt naked. That's fucking weird. Uh, Sam Kim, do you have another job or is YouTube your job? I'm trying to make YouTube my job. I'm trying to make it my job, dog. Trying on that YouTube grind. What's, uh, what did IDUP say in that um, Jinx Reloaded video? 
This isn't a, a house, this is a grind house. So hit the like button if you get that that reference. Oh, let's see. Let's see these other shit. Uh, somebody said never forget. <laughs> That's fucking weird. Um, I never forget what that steel beams. Jeff fuel doesn't. Uh, Je Jeff fuel doesn't melt steel beams. Don't forget that. Oh, that's funny. Four of you got the, <laughs> four of you got it, and then one of you took the like back. You're funny. Uh, let me see some other shit. You should go on America's Got Talent. Should I really? I don't know. I'm not gonna do that ever. Um, I'm not gonna do that, and I'll tell you why. Uh, because I'm lazy, honestly. That's pretty much it. Uh, I don't think I, I don't like those shows. I don't even watch it. Uh, the only one that I watch, for example, is Fool Us, uh, and even then, I still watch over a grain of salt because there are some tricks. That there are no fucking way that they don't know how they're doing it. There's no way. Um, there's no fucking way. So they'll throw them bones and shit. And I'm like, ah. Uh, and the show would be one long censorship. Oh, yeah, like I'd censor my face. I wouldn't say I'm me, though. I wouldn't say I'm me. So you would have to figure it out by either my hands or my voice or my accent. I take out the rings, obviously. Um, but you would have to, you'd have to be like, wait, is that... Is that Piggy? I don't recognize. I don't know Piggy uh, without him saying cunt. Yeah, exactly. It'd be harder because I can't say dirty words like that. Uh, is uh, is uh, Nick Cannon still on the show? America's Got Talent. Is Nick Cannon still doing that shit? Is he? Because you would know it's me because I would punch Nick Cannon. No, he's not? Okay. Uh, I would go out of my way to go and try to punch Nick Cannon. Tyra Banks, I punched Tyra Banks then. You know it's me. You're like, hey, it's Piggy. Because uh, he said he'd punch Tyra Banks, and now somebody got arrested for punching Tyra Banks in America's Got Talent. So you know it would be me. Uh, <laughs> right in the tits. That's funny. Uh, let me see. Uh, what's your favorite card trick that blows spectators' minds and make their brains go everywhere? I think out of this world, man. Out of this world is definitely a great one. Um, and I do a, I, I do a tutorial on this channel for <laughs> Loza is your 3%. Are you talking about the female demographic, the female demographic, which is 3% of my viewing audience? Uh, there's an, there's a, uh, out of this world that is, uh, impromptu that I do on this channel. That's based on Michael Mars classic version. Uh, but I combine Michael Mar and Paul Harris. I really, really like that trick. You should check that out. That one is, uh, out of this world is one of those that kind of, you don't get those reactions, I think, that are like, oh, shit, oh, my God, how'd you do that? Uh, you get one of those reactions that are more like, what the fuck? I think David Blaine rid, rid it. I might actually be autistic. Uh, David Blaine wrote in his book about Winston Churchill uh, seeing Out of This World being performed, and he could not figure it out, and he, you know, he had the magician perform it over and over and over again, and he still wouldn't get it. Um, it's one of those tricks. I, I really enjoy Out of This World. Oh, let me see this shit. Uh, let me see. Uh, why does it matter if he punches a black person or a white person? Are black people special? Yeah, I'm an equal opportunity puncher. Um, it's happenstance that Tyra Banks is black. But if Tyra Banks is white, I'd still probably punch her in the show. Right? I'd still probably punch her in the show. So I'm an equal opportunity puncher. Paul Curry wrote about that himself. Uh, I was reading something like that two hours. Oh, so Paul Curry was the one that actually did Out of This World for him. I don't know. I don't remember. I, I mean, I, I forgot the specific page, but I remember. Let me see if I could look that up. Uh, but I remember it was a classic story, and I was like, oh, shit. Uh, Paul Curry, Winston Churchill. Let me check that shit out. Uh, the trick that fooled Winston Churchill. I don't think that's hard to do, by the way. It's not like fooling Winston Churchill is a giant accomplishment. The guy was a fucking drunk anyways. But um, the, just the, the story, I think, is enough to kind of tell you like the, the typical reaction to it. Uh, in Chapter 13 of the book, Magician's uh, Magic, Paul Curry describes a dinner party during World War II where a magician named Harry Green. So it wasn't Paul Curry. It was... Uh, it was uh, Harry Green, who apparently performed it for him. Churchill insisted that the trick be performed for him at half a dozen times and was thoroughly baffled. 
Dope. Um, hold up, Mr. Keyboard, you're saying to do a double lift. Hold up. Uh, do a double turnover and trap it with the tip of your thumb. Okay, what's happening? Tip, of, is that what you want me to do? Do a double lift and trap it with the tip of your thumb? What? Are you trolling me right now? No, I'll do it again. Okay. All right. Let me get, let me get my double ready here. Okay. Okay. Well, actually, I'm uh, since I'm so fucking used to trapping it here, it's hard to trap it in the tip of my th thumb. He's whacking to this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 He has some sort of weird uh, thumb fetish. Show a card with a double. I don't know what you're talking about, dude. Show a card with a double. What do you mean? You said do a double turnover, and then trap. Trap it with my thumb, okay? This is the Altman trap. Trapping it here is called the Altman trap. Yeah, Whedon 13. Uh, but I don't know what you want me to trap with the tip of my thumb. Okay, it's literally on my thumb right now. Now turn over the... I don't... What? Is, am I, are you pranking me right now? See, I'm used, to, I'm used to doing it from over here. That you transfer it over that way. And then that way you could do continuous double lifts. I'm used to doing it there, but not the thumb, dude. I'm not used to that shit. Uh, and then, there, uh, I, you know, I was recently watching a Daryl tape where he does that, the strike strike double. Uh, that one, that was a fucking weird one. I never understood doubles that start up here. With your thumb, rise. Okay. Is, uh, is this, I don't know what I'm supposed to. You know, it'd be better if, if maybe you linked a video or some shit. Right, as opposed to me just trying to follow your instruction here, which I feel like you're gonna say, then stick your thumb in my asshole. I feel like that's what it's gonna end up with. Did I, I just did like the worst. There's a, I know, there's a, I remember seeing this as a double. Uh, if you remember Lee Asher's diving board double, that was one that was fucking weird. You did this shit pretty much. And then you would catch the double. He would do it consistently. That shit blew my fucking mind. Uh, Jesus Christ. There are so many fucking weird double lifts. Uh, but yeah, that's weird. I don't know what you're trying to get me to do, Mr. Awesome Kiwi. I do actually feel like you're jerking off at this point, telling me what to do. You're like, yeah, fucking turn it over now. Yeah, now catch it in your thumb. Like, I, I feel like that's an actual thing. Like You're not just saying, saying to do that. Remember this move? Do you guys know that move? How fucking, I remember reading that move years ago, that you show a spectator the card like this, and then you go, oh, okay, then uh, to, to rub it, and then it changes. Ah, Man, we got that. You know what? There you go. Somebody asked me, what's the most useless move you've ever learned? That one. That move. Right here. Jack of hearts. Two of hearts. That's the most useless move. That, uh, I, th I think that was in one of uh, Bill Malone's old tapes. That's a useless move, at least to me. I mean, you do have the merit of uh, being able to show one card, but I don't, I don't like that move. So there you go. Whoever asked uh, what's the most useless move. Can Piggy clip shift? No, I can't. Uh, let me see. I'm trying it now off camera, uh, and it looks like shit. Yeah, it looks like hot shit. I uh, Definitely not. You hear that? That's, yeah, that's how, it, you could hear it. Ray Charles could fucking see it. He made the move. <laughs> Fuck. Put your thumb perpendicular. Are you, <laughs> are you, I like how you could tell what I'm doing from the sound of it alone. That's actually kind of funny. That's really funny. Are you saying Chad's better than you? Yeah, I'm saying Chad Nelson is probably better than, than me at a move that he came up with. Um, remember this fucking shit? Everyone was doing all this shit. Uh, and trap it with the tip of your th Mr. Awesome Kiwi, I don't know what fetish you have, but I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, I, I'm not gonna, what do you call it when people are like, I'm a uh, terrorist, I don't negotiate with terrorists, I don't negotiate with masturbators, alright, with frantic masturbators, uh, do a trick with your right hand, have you ever tried doing that, I feel like uh, if you tell me to do any move with my right hand, it's gonna look autistic, like let me try to get a break, um, Fuck. Yeah, that shit's way hard. Let me try to do a pass. Oh, right, uh, one-handed cut? I could, I could do that. I could definitely do that with my right hand. 
uh, with, I mean, the left hand, that's the one that I get the most. Uh, David Stinson, you're my favorite YouTuber. I do magic and I've learned a lot of your stuff. Uh, but I watch your videos because your comedy is insane. Thank you, David Stinson. I appreciate the hotness of your compliment there. Uh, it's a welcome change between people telling me that um, I'm, a, I'm a dumb cunt. So I appreciate that uh, tremendously. Uh, let's see if I can do this. Let me see if I can do this. I can't do this. I can't do that. Uh, do a trick. Uh, thank you for your advice and help. I, I appreciate that. I really do, David Stinson. Uh, and a sea of cunts. Uh, I appreciate that. Get out to LA. Let's do a castle run. You, me, and Chad. We'll clip ship the night away. Would that end with a, a, a night of uh, dirty romantic sex? Is that what that's going to Is that what that's gonna do? You know what? Actually, I've been reading up. Um, I've been trying to find as many videos of Marlo as possible. <laughs> Three-way docking. I don't know how that worked. I've been trying to find a lot of videos of Marlo. Uh, and if someone can actually tell me how to... How he does this, I would fucking be greatly appreciative. There's a video of him on YouTube that he's doing uh, 17 minutes, and I think it's either John Rocker Bomber or Dave Solomon who is uh, doing the narration of Ed Marlowe on YouTube. Uh, and he's just doing solid performance. So it's, it's 17 minutes of him doing packet switches and um, fucking uh, second deals. And it's like, oh shit, okay, I might want to take my dick out. But he does a uh, he does a color change that he's holding cards like this he, he's holding the cards like this and then he goes cha and the, the card changes color i have never fucking seen it and then in the video let me see if i'll link it i'll link the, the video uh either john rocker bomber or dave solomon is like oh i still don't uh i didn't know how he did this color change and uh it took me a while to figure it out let me see if i can find it uh marlo and marlo i'll see if i can find it here one of you could tell me uh What's the name of it? Found it. Okay. So, yeah, it's... I think it's Rock, uh, John Rocker Bomber who's doing the... Uh, this is the video. And the color change, I think, if I'm not mistaken, takes place on minute... God, he's fucking... Marlo is a fucking stud. This guy is a fucking champ. Oh, right here. Okay, no, never mind. That's a spin change. Okay, hold up. Let me see if I can find it. Now it's going to be 10 minutes of me just trying to find this fucking move. Eddie could do things that required... Oh, this is Dave Solomon. It's not John Rockerbaum. Jew. Now I'm sad out. <laughs> That's the way to, the way to get in trouble. We had no idea. We ran... Let's see. Look at this. Look how that just ch nearly changed. Let me see. Up. You'll see it. It's a one-handed change. Oh, look, he's, it's no coming up. We ran, look at this. Look how that just Let's see. really changed in the hand. Uh, it's on minutes. Now watch this. Oh, this minute 141. One. Watch how he just swings his arm and the card changes. What the fuck? Yeah, minute 141 of that video. He does a color change. That's so fucking hot. Uh, I, I'm still trying to figure that shit out. I at least know the name of it um, so I could, you know, see if I could find it somewhere. Uh, there's apparently a couple Marlo links sent me recently in your Discord. I don't know what you mean by that, dog. Uh, what do you do? Let me see. What do you do when they grab your deck and bend them? Oh, that's the worst. That's the worst. When like, hey man, let me borrow your cards, and then you come back and they're like this, or they, they you just get them back and it looks like they were ran through by a a gangbang in um Thailand uh, brothel. Uh, you just deal with it or don't give your cards out. Uh, let me see. Hey, you replied in my comment something about that. Yeah, I remember that, dog. About your edgy ass shit. Uh, hold up. Just Marlo, YouTube of things people made of him. Oh, that's funny. The moment I said, hey, check out that video. Everyone's like, okay. But yeah, but that video, it's at, it's at minute 141 of that video that I linked, or 147, uh, that he does this amazing fucking color change that he's holding in the cards like this. I just want to know where that's from. And I have no idea where that's from. Uh, I think Marlo's just swinging the card back to front, like the cut you do before you spin a card out with your middle finger, right? Swing a card back to front. Slid that back. 
Yeah, you think? I, it's just so clean. It's so fucking clean. Fuck this guy for being so fucking good at everything he does. Or did. He's dead now, unfortunately. This. This is the one. This is nuts. Watch how he Look at that. Just swings his Jesus. arm. Jesus. And the card changes. We Come on. Over and over and over. Come the fuck yeah. on. It wasn't until much later that I really found out how that... Jesus. And this is an amazing video because it's 17 minutes. 17 fucking minutes of just Marlo just going in. Just fucking doing little packet switches, little tricks, little little stupid slides and shit. But fuck, the way he touches the cards is just fucking nuts. Man, that would be fucking crazy. Anything of like old school like this, I fucking love watching. Jesus, what a, f god damn it, this guy's a fucking goat. When did he die, 91? Shit. That was, fuck. Uh, let me see what other comments here. Uh, Theor and Kane, what's your opinion on mentalism? Uh, I think it's good, I mean, uh, Phil Hellsmuth, card trick, is that a reference to the famous poker player? Um... Yeah, yeah, take, uh, hold up, before I answer that, it says, turn this video into a Pitcake Reacts and Marlo video. I can't do that without my dick out, unfortunately. I can't watch Marlo without my dick out, so uh, I don't know if that'd be monetized. Um, hey, can you reply to my comments so I have something really cool to show my girlfriend? Me and her love watching your videos together. David Stinson. Uh, David Stinson, I would suck your dick if you were here. Um, I would do dirty, dirty things to you and possibly your girlfriend, but more likely than not, I'd tell her to leave the room uh, because it's gay if she watches. Like, if she watches, what is that? That's kind of gay. Uh, so there you go. I hope you appreciate that about you in particular. Uh, so I hope you heard that too. Uh, let me see some stuff here. Hold up. Somebody said, uh, fuck, I was answering. Oh, well, your opinion on mentalism. I think mentalism is uh, the last frontier of things that people believe to be real in magic, which kind of leads to, you know, people not... <laughs> Like lying, I guess. I guess because mentalism, if you, card tricks, somebody sees a card trick, they're obviously gonna know the sleight of hand involved, unless they're actually legitimately special. Uh, you're not gonna find a lot of people that truly believe in uh, card tricks here in Kentucky. Holy shit! What time is it there? It's like five here. It's like five fifty-three. Um, but yeah, but you're not gonna find a lot of people that think card tricks are legitimate um, and not sleight of hand. Five fifty-three, same time. Uh, but he. Uh, but mentalism is different because mentalism is kind of believable. So, you know, it's one of those things that's the last frontier of actual believable magic. And that's kind of interesting. That's kind of an interesting position to be in because even if you have all these expose videos, even if you have all these, you know, tutorials on fucking mentalism shit, uh, a lot of people still believe that it's real if you present it correctly. I mean, you could pretty much start a religion with a fucking center deal, which is crazy. Um, but yeah, so it's, it's just fucking nuts. Uh, so yeah, I think mentalism is very interesting. Uh, why do you think very few magicians are female? That's a good, that's a good question. It, you know, I don't know. I actually don't know. Magic obviously is a way that people kind of cheat to facilitate, uh, communication. So magic is typically like people typically get into magic because of their inability to communicate efficiently with people. So they use magic as a conduit to kind of break that gap and break the ice and then be able to talk to people and be able to have something that's different about them. So when it comes to why women don't necessarily get into magic, I think obviously they do. There's a certain percentage of female magicians that exist and they're, you know, good. Uh, I don't like, however, when female magicians use the fact that they're female, they're kind of like, oh, yeah, I'm a female magician. Like, you're a magician. Like, there's no, you shouldn't fucking see gender. Um, but I just think that it appeals more to, to men. I think that it appeals more to, to boys and men than, than females. Females don't necessarily get interested in it. They might read on some stuff. They might read, like, how to do certain things. Uh, but I don't think as, like, an actual practice, they're not going to get into it as deeper as, uh, as males. I really don't know why, though. Uh, I mean, obviously, we go through the same sort of ideals that, you know, both genders go through different things, but, you know, we, we all have that awkward phase. We all have that time we're trying to figure ourselves out. And uh, magic just comes into certain people as that thing that allows them to actually open up and interact with other people. So 
it's just kind of weird. Uh, it's just it's just weird that it, it gravitates more towards men, but I can't tell you why. Uh, mind effects? Are you scared of the hurricane? It hits tomorrow. Fuck. Yeah, that shit's not fun. Do you live in Homestead? No, I don't live in Homestead. I'd kill myself if I lived in Homestead. Like a young Eskimo girl is going to have a hard time envisioning themselves as a rapper. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Um, same thing with, with rap. Same thing with things like that. Ma magic doesn't typically appeal to, to females in that sense. Uh, not to say that there aren't female magicians, but, you know, it's just a weird situation. Uh, let me see. Do you know that trick where the magician gives the spectator? Okay, where you give the spectator a playing card. Tell them to put it in their pocket. There is incorrect. Um, make it disappear from their pocket without reaching in. I've never seen that, dude. I've never seen that. I've never seen a somebody go, hey, put this card in your pocket. Hey, now the card's gone. Maybe the card changes, right? Maybe the card changes, but I've never seen it actually disappear from their pocket. So, uh, Jeremy Jackson, hail pig cake. Ah, you got me with that. The female, magi uh, female magicians. Billy Kidd is amazing. Oh, okay, for a second I thought you were talking about the ex-WCW wrestler, Billy Kidman. But anyways, not to show myself off too much and give um, in my other knowledge bases too much credence here. Uh, let me see. So lack of role models and representation is a self-fulfilling prophecy. That's interesting. That's fairly interesting. Um, I don't know, man. It's, it's an interesting question to, to try to figure out as to why magic tends to appeal to males more than females and why it appeals to certain females and not uh, the rest of females. But it's, it's interesting. Somebody needs to come up with a dissertation on that shit, like a straight up dissertation. Uh, that could be a thing as to trying to figure out. It would be very difficult to, to study, but it's still something that's fairly interesting. Uh, you're the best YouTube image. Thank you, Jeremy. Uh, I like your sunglasses, dog. I appreciate that from your from your your fucking video your sh picture there. Let me see these. Uh, it's funny, Jared MC says it's funny because I have a friend and I showed a trick to her and she bought a deck and she was asking me how to do tricks so I showed her your channel. That's funny. I'm surprised I haven't gotten angry. Um, mis I don't. I really. I haven't said anything misogynist. Uh, but I'm surprised I haven't gotten any sort of like you say cunt a lot. You're fucking mean. Like I haven't gotten any of those emails. I've only gotten positive emails and positive comments. Uh, so yeah, I I appreciate that, dog. Let's see. Let me look through this shit. Uh, but I yeah, that, you know that's that's a fairly interesting thing. It's it's the idea of why it is that certain people, and I mean it's it, not to say that everyone that gets into magic is socially awkward and socially like inept, but. Uh, there's certainly, like, you can't deny that, obviously, it's a male-dominated thing, and there's, you know, obviously, you might have people spin it, oh, you're misogynist, women could be just as good as men, yeah, they could be, <laughs> in magic, but the fact is that you don't see a lot of women in magic, and it's fairly interesting to see why, uh, there is a lot of, uh, it's a lot, it's male-dominated over, over, over females, I mean, we all go through the same sort of things growing up, so, you know, that has to kind of appeal to, to females in that sense. Who would know this? Who would know the answer to this question? Who would know this shit? Somebody would know the, the concrete answer to this. Uh, Bill Kalush? No, he wouldn't. He wouldn't know it. Uh, Jordan Peterson, yeah. Uh, but somebody that's in the magic community. Like, is there anybody in the magic community that would... Um, that would do that? And, you know, it's unfortunate, too, because I think as a female magician you're probably not going to be taken as seriously as a male magician. If you're a female magician, they're not going to take you as seriously, which is kind of unfortunate because there are really, really good female magicians. But, you know, because it's such a male-dominated thing, it's I don't think that um, they'd be taken as seriously as a male magician. But, eh, it's yeah, it's, it's just not a weird... Uh, it's a very weird thing. Are there any females watching my shit? Like, that's the thing. I don't know if there's active female viewers. I've seen the demographic... Of females that watch my shit and it's like three percent demographic and even then i'm pretty sure they watch it by accident uh ricky j yeah ricky j might have to say it he might he might definitely uh you know harry lorraine might say something uh def to that extent he might he might say some fucking legit shit <laughs> females are doing my halo cut i can't do this shit you know he'll fucking go crazy on that shit 
Make a rent. <laughs> I don't know why I found that funny. Uh, ex elusive CTW. Uh, look at Mulan, where a girl wants to be a great soldier, but the world knows that all great soldiers are male. They're the attitude will be cultivated the same way. Yeah, I mean, obviously, it's, it's uh, fiction, but you, it's drawing on real-life things. Um, yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, the thing is that there are female magicians out there. They are out there, and they are, you know, they do fucking perform, but... I don't see them. <laughs> I don't see them, dog. Uh, did you buy Chris Ramsey's deck? I haven't. I haven't bought Chris Ramsey's deck. I said, I think a couple live streams. I don't really go out of my way to buy cards. Uh, if I see a cool deck, I'll buy it. Like if it's there. Um, but if it's like, I'm not going to go out of my way to actually, um, buy a deck of cards. It doesn't have any sort of particular feelings. I'm sure the cards are dope as shit. Uh, but they're not necessarily, um, they're not necessarily, I'm not going to go out of my way to buy them. If they don't have any sort of like, like cool feature uh do a content cup on me you dumb fuck said sniper wolf why am i looking at this twitter now okay all right jesus fucking christ let me see some other hot questions here uh i'm gay jk okay thank you jeremy i didn't uh need to know about that that's your own thing dude if you find dicks hot let me see. Calvin C. Okay, that's hot. Uh, Hugo. Hugo here said, Piggy, I've been doing magic since one year, and your channel has been a giant booster of quality of magic repertoire. Keep it up. Much love from Switzerland. Thank you, dog. Love you too, dog. Love you. Love your people. I've already mentioned this to you before. I think you have hot women in Switzerland. So you, you keep it up with your amazing ass country. Uh, let me see a couple more questions. It's, it's a two, two hour point here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to answer a couple more questions. Sweden has better women. Is it going to be a, a Sweden versus Switzerland sort of a thing now? That's the worst. When you combine them. Are you drinking LaCroix? No, it's a uh, sugar-free Red Bull because I'm a basic bitch. Is there a trick you love but don't know how to perform? You know, there aren't a lot of tricks uh, that I don't know how they're done. And that's not just out of like, mm -hmm. like just saying, oh, I can't get fooled by tricks. Uh, I just, there's a lot of tricks that I don't, um, I just don't, you, once you, you get a certain point in your magic knowledge, you're just looking for moves. And it's unfortunate because whenever I see a trick, I'm not looking at it for the trick. I'm looking at it. I'm like, oh, okay. He just did a, I see the pinky. Okay. All right. The card's on top. Okay. Okay, the card's on that pile. Like, I know exactly where the card is. Uh, and it's kind of fucking... It's kind of um, shitty when you get to that point. I wish I could look at a trick and not be thinking of magical methods and moves. But you can't help it because it's like... If you do film, if, if you're into, like, films and stuff, you watch films and you notice cuts, you notice edits, you notice when a camera transitions, you appreciate color grading and you're like, oh, okay, all right, that's a nice... I like that. So when it comes to magic, it's just shitty because you, you learn all these tricks and then you can't just look at a trick objectively. You have to look at the trick in terms of the actual moves and methods. And I wish I could get back to the point where I'm not doing that. I'm just looking at the trick and I get just as fooled. Uh, Luca Ferrari says, what do you think of pass covers? I don't like them much. I could easily jerk off to Diego. Allegri's cover pass. Search for pass photo on YouTube. Trust me, you'll like it. I mean, obviously, I've mentioned uh, Xavier Spades has a great work on the cover pass. I've seen, uh, you know, a lot of other cover passes from that. It goes way back, uh, you know, using that one initial uh, cover. But um, I, you know, I, again, I'm not going to learn it if I don't need it, right? So in my sort of repertoire, I, I like the classic pass, and I kind of welcome that little imperfection that it has. Um because obviously when you're doing a classic pass, there's that millisecond where if they're looking at the wrong spot, you know, they're going to see it or they're going to see something that they shouldn't see. But I think that, you know, that sh that's well covered by the actions that you take. So if you if you just square up a deck, for example, uh, the, the pass is covered well there. If you're doing other actions, if you maybe distract their attention, I prefer relying on that to something about an actual just uh, like a cover or, or an actual physical move. So I prefer to, to use like mental misdirection and actual uh, like a physical 
a physical move. Uh, but yeah, fuck, man. I think I, I remember when I first saw somebody do a cover pass, and I'm like, oh shit, how the fuck did that even work? Because you, you there's literally nothing to see. You see a, the top card, right? The card it gets squared, and then that's it. That's you. There's nothing to see. It's a wonderful move. But again, I don't think I took a little bit of time to try to learn it, and I I just realized that this is not really gonna benefit me. Uh, who's your favorite cardist? I don't have a favorite cardist, dude. I mean, uh, that's the unfortunate thing about cardistry, is that the focus is away from the actual person doing it, and the focus becomes the actual cards and the movement themselves. So you almost lose the person. Uh, it's hard to to remember. Like, for example, you're you're scrolling through Instagram and you see a bunch of card stuff and a bunch of, um, you know, magic and you sorry, you see a lot of cardistry uh, and um, you tend to lose the person. So the person is like, oh, shit, it it almost becomes like the person doesn't matter, which is the part that I, you know, I don't necessarily enjoy about cardistry. And the part that I like about magic is that in magic, you have an opportunity to show your personality. And I think that, you know, on my channel, even though you technically haven't seen my face and you don't have that visual cue, uh, you kind of still get, you know, the, the personality through the tricks. Cardistry, you don't get that. You don't get the personality through the actual things. All you see are these wonderful things happening with the cards, but then you kind of lose the person. So the person almost becomes faceless. And that's the part that I, I don't necessarily like about cardistry. Um, and you know, that's why I prefer magic way more than cardistry. So I don't necessarily have a favorite cardist because I can't like, I can only tell you like a handful, Dan and Dave, uh, you know, Shint Lim does a little bit of it, but he's not a cardist per, by like, you know, he's more of a magician. I can't really tell you anyone that's like a cardist by name, uh, even though they might have, you know, a hundred thousand fucking followers on Instagram. Uh, you know, it's, it's kind of, um, it's it's one of those weird things because you don't necessarily remember them. You just remember the moves. So I think that that's the major downside of it. Oh, shit. I almost just broke my shit. Uh, can you send me anthrax? Uh, you know, if you find anthrax and you send it, I'd, I'd be very impressed that you'd have access to uh, anthrax. I'd be very impressed. Let me see what somebody said. Uh, what's your opinion on Alexis Texas? Uh, I think her ass is fat. Um... I mean, but I think that's kind of her thing. If her ass wasn't fat, then she really wouldn't be. Yeah, she really wouldn't be where she is. Uh, let me look at these other comments here. It says, Teller from Penn & Teller talked about a trick where you just talked about came into play a lot. I'm going to uh, PM you on Discord if you have that open. Uh, okay, that's interesting. Somebody said, Cardist. Uh, would you consider yourself a magician and what's the definition of one? You know, I, I'm kind of in a hypocritical point because I hate the term magician. And honestly, I don't like a lot of magicians. I don't. Um, like, I, I really don't. It's just, it's like to be a magician, to me, that's that, that, that terminology is very cringy. But at the same time, I also don't like when people try to find other ways to refer to themselves that are not magicians. So you have, for example... Um, and I love James Brown, don't get me wrong, the magician, uh, but James Brown calls himself like a professional opportunist. I think that's pretty cringy too. So I'm, I'm kind of in a midpoint where I don't know what to refer myself or other people without cringing tremendously. But I think that if you go, I'm a magician, that's pretty cringy. Like I, I don't like that terminology, but at the same time, if you refer to yourself as like, I'm an opportunist or I'm a producer, like there's a, you know, like all these different terms to try to avoid saying magician. I I don't like any of those either. So I don't know what I, like I don't know what term to use, but I definitely don't like magician. I, I don't like that word. A conjurer. I don't fucking like that. <laughs> like either. Like there's a bunch of uh terminology for magicians that I, I don't I don't particularly like. Um but um again I'm I'm kind of in the weird midpoint where I don't uh I don't typically like, I don't know what to refer to myself as. I don't know what to refer to other people without cringing tremendously. So that's just me. I'm sure other people don't have an issue with calling themselves a magician or being like, I'm a magician, but I, I know I do. Uh, so wait, <laughs> I'm a wizard. Card mechanic. I'll give, I'll give a pass on that one. Card mechanic. But then again, that, that makes me like think like, how is it? Do you fix cards? What's a card mechanic? Right? I, yeah. 
it's it's just a weird thing uh, with the term with the magician term. It's 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 definitely antiquated, I think for sure. Um, I remember Marlo uh, would always sign his things cardily yours. He referred to himself as a cardition, right? Uh, so it's just weird. I think we put a big positive change in the community. We wouldn't be ashamed to say magician. It's not about being ashamed. It's just a definition, I think. Um, and the word magician is just like you're not a magician. You you know you're you're. It's like, it's I'm gonna I don't know. <laughs> I need to f sit down and figure it out. Um, but I know that I don't like magician and I don't like the terms that replace magician. So I'm like entertainer. <laughs> that's that's a good one. Entertainer. Uh yeah. Dear and Kane, yes, that's happened before. You have a, a duplicate, and then somebody. Uh, I remember producing uh, all the aces, and then I, actually, you know, a trick I did. I did the. Um, I did. Uh, Greg Wilson has a has a way to cut to the aces, that the spectator cuts the the cards just like that, right? They cut the cards just like this, and then you pick the cards up, like this, right? And then you put them back like this. And they turn over all of them, and then all of them are the aces. Uh, I did it, and then there were two ace of hearts. I remember doing that a long, long time ago, and I got laughed at. I got laughed at. Uh, when was the first time you heard Teller talk? Uh, probably uh, one of the documentaries uh, that he did, the Penn and Teller go to Egypt, go to Africa. That's one of the ones that I first saw him talk. And then when I saw them in person, I got him on video uh, in a very cringy way, so... Yeah, that was uh, that. I I could not stop smiling, seeing Teller literally an inch away from my face. Fuck. Because I, when I was younger, Penn and Teller were like my heroes, pretty much. I would I would you know watch all their shit every time I saw them. Uh, yeah, they speak to everyone after every show, which is fucking crazy. These guys are literally making like hundreds of thousands of dollars every fucking show, and they still still to this day wait outside. And make sure to say hi to absolutely everybody and to say hello and to shake your hand and to take a picture and to uh, fucking, yeah, to talk, to say shit. Like, they, they'll fucking do that. You know, and people hang around for fucking, like, damn, man, that's fucking nuts. Uh, and the fact that they still do that, man, they deserve all the, all the blowjobs they get. I'm sure they get blowjobs. Oh... Uh... Let me see. <laughs> you should go on Foolish. You know, it's funny. I was thinking of a trick for Foolish the other day. I was actually thinking of a method of any card or any number for Foolish. Um, I was thinking of what I would say, the pattern. I was thinking of um, how I would go about doing stuff to try to get them to think I'm doing something else. Uh, you know, obviously picking a certain card. I was thinking of, of that. I, I think it's super hard to fool them, honestly. Uh, you could probably go into a magic store and, and buy something to fool them that's like new, uh, that's fresh in the market, and it will definitely, like, they'll definitely not know how the fuck you did it. You'd get so much shit from the magic community, um, but, you know, you'd still technically be able to say, oh, I fooled them, you know. Uh, like, I'm sure if you have, if you do something with uh, one of these decks, there's a fucking deck. I don't know if it's real or not, but it's like an like electronic deck. That you could get a cue by, uh, if somebody cuts to a card, it gives you the actual cue to it. Like, you, there's a certain vibration to it. I'm pretty sure something like that will fool them. Uh, but I was thinking of uh, any card, any number method to fool them. And I have a couple methods. Uh, I still need to tr think of that. But it's an interesting thing. Like, how do you, uh, what do you do to go about to try to fool these guys? Like, that's an interesting way to start thinking of tricks. Uh, thinking of methods and thinking of uh, different effects. Like, what can you do to fool them? I could do in any card in any number, right? But how would I do it in a way that's not going to fool? That's going to fool them. Well, uh, have multiple people pick the card and multiple people pick the number, right? But uh, do you have the deck on the table the entire time? Do you switch decks? Do you have a stooge? You know. Uh, I, I think I remember seeing Joshua J. He did a wonderful thing. He he had a gimmick deck that he handed to a spectator and told him, go ahead, look at it. And then that they're like, oh, fuck, how the fuck did he do that? So, you know, that those there's a bunch of interesting ways to uh, to to fool them. I, I do a pseudo crisscross. I remember that whole Jay Sankey video. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. That was that was not a fun time. 
And I'm a huge Jay Sankey fan. Huge fucking Jay Sankey fan. Um, but uh, he, he did that whole bit where he's like, how I secretly fooled them. And it's like, oh, man, that's not what it looks like, though. You're not allowed to use Stooges? Damn. I'm saying like an instant Stooge. Like an instant Stooge. It fooled the entire room of people, uh, professional magicians. Yeah, but it's, uh, the, the deck is gimmicked, right? From my understanding, he's doing the, the blind man premise. Because he had a, a trick that he put out years ago in uh, Talk About Tricks. Uh, and he... He did that version, and that version used a blank card, uh, sorry, blank deck with, you know, blank marked cards. Um, yeah, okay, man, I keep, hold up, okay. Top notch, I'm going to address your comment, but hold up. Uh, from my understanding, Joshua J, his trick requires a gimmick deck, correct? I don't know if I'm correct about that. If it is, then it's really interesting what he did at the end there, because... Yeah, but he still gave the deck to the participant, which I found really, really interesting because the deck still had the gimmick cards in it or the cards that were, you know, there that they weren't supposed to see. He still gave it to them. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. So that's, that's really interesting because that way they're like, oh, fuck, he wouldn't give the deck out. He pretty much did that thing with, uh, he did the thing where you, you expose the method. I think Al Quran or who was it that did it? It was a mentalist in the nine. 1800s, he would come out and say, some people use uh, gimmicks like this, and he'd show a slate that was like a special gimmick, and then he'd say, I'm not going to do that, I'm going to use a real slate, and then he does this trick with the exact same gimmick slate, or uh, doing the linking rings, coming out on stage and saying, some magicians use uh, the linking rings with a hole in the top, and then you expose a method, you throw them away, and you say, I'm not going to do that, I'm going to do mine without the hole in the top, and then you link the rings, and you do the exact same thing. Uh, but by coming out and dismissing it, people are not going to think that you're fucking using the gimmick that you said you're not using. If that makes sense. I think that's what Joshua J did with uh, the deck. And I find that really interesting that he did that with two, you know, really well fucking verse magicians. Uh, ballsy. Yeah, very ballsy. But you know what? It fooled him. Fuck. That's fucking nuts. And you saw it live, you cunt. I'm a jealous cunt. <laughs> that's like when I say I'm not a fat piece of shit to girls yeah you're right yeah uh, that's exactly a top notch but hold up you said something here that I want to address top notch you said oh Brian Brushu did an instant stooge yeah he did a fucking amazing instant stooge obviously they knew what it was uh, which kind of sucks but that's a great method for stage what a wonderful stage bit because he, he makes the dollar bill disappear, and then obviously it appears inside of the... Or no, he makes the guy eat it, and then uh, it, it's logical, right? But, uh, God, it's so good. I have a couple tricks with that. I'm not gonna... That's something that I... I that's a project that I, I definitely want to work on, uh, using that method. The, uh, the no method, I have a, a lot of stuff written up with that, and a lot of good ideas with that. I, I need a... There's a project later later on that i definitely want to come out with that that's another super secret project um let me see some other stuff he knew he would be busted yeah but he got he got he did a i mean he knew he was gonna get busted for sure but at the same time uh he handled it in a way that it, it's beneficial to him regardless even if he didn't fool him he still showed a wonderful act he did a, a great like an amazingly well-written well-rehearsed uh like good like the the blocking everything was perfect that's the how he did the, the thing and it was logical because the person's eating it so what more sense does it make to find a fucking dollar bill inside of them it's fucking great uh instant stooge aiden travis is pretty much stooge is someone that's in on a trick right uh so that means that you have somebody like you know your girlfriend's in the audience and then you have somebody think of any card and you go, you man, name any card. And you've told her to think of, you know, the five of clubs. That's a stooge. An instant stooge. It's pretty much you're making a, a spectator into a participant that's into the trick. That's like in the trick uh, without letting the rest of the audience know. So the one way that I do that, that I teach on the channel, for example, is this method. That you, you, you do a blank fan. So you see the rest of the cards are blank. And you show this to one particular spectator who's right here and you say, oh, think of a card that you could see, right? To the rest of the audience, 
they think you're showing the rest of the deck. So the, the rest of the audience is assuming that the spectators is seeing this. That's what they're assuming. Uh, but really, they're seeing blank cards. They're seeing the blank side of the cards. So if you tell somebody, hey, think of any card you could see, you're stooging them as to this card. You're pretty much... There, there's no doubt that they're in on the method here. They're, they're in on the little thing, so you're instantly stooging them. That's, uh, that's kind of the, you know, best example to give you at this point. Uh, so there you go. There's a lot, man. That, that, uh, but the, the best instant stooge methods are the ones where even the person is, is still fooled. Uh, hold up. What was that bit about? Look at the video, uh, Joshua De Silver. There's a video where Jay Sankey says how I secretly fooled Penn and Teller, uh, and then you watch the actual video, and there's just a couple of different things because uh, obviously to get on fool us, you need to show the producer the trick, right? You show the producer the trick, and then you tell them the method, and then if Penn and Teller figured out, uh, obviously the producer knows the method, so you can't lie, and Penn and Teller can't, uh, you know, say that they that you fooled them. Like there's a whole thing uh, to make sure that. You don't say, oh, that's not the method. Because how easy would it be if I could just go on the show, um, say a trick, they take their guess, and then I say that's not how you do it. And then that's it. That's the end of it. So they show the producer. But uh, Jay, yeah, yeah, Johnny Thompson. Um, Jay did some weird stuff where he said that he fooled them by doing things to, like he did things intentionally to lead them down a garden path. Uh, like, for example, he did a levitation. He did a, a rising card where he has a hole in the box, right? So there's a hole in the box. And then he said that he held, for example, he wanted to make them think that he was using thread. So he held the box close to his body because the classic method with thread is that obviously it's anchored to your body. Uh, and then when you put the card over the thread, right? You put you pull the cards away from your body and then the, the tension is going to make the card rise so one of the things that he said that he did was that he held the cards close to his body on purpose to make it seem like he was using a thread but really he was using his thumb and i i don't know it seemed to me from the video that it was very clear that penn and taylor knew that he was using a thumb method or that it was very clear as to the method he was using so he just said a couple things that really didn't make a lot of sense uh, so he said, oh, I, I did that. And then he talked about the, um, that he did the, he did cardboard contortionist, which is a fucking wonderful routine. If you don't know what that trick is, fuck, look it up by Jay Sankey, but it's a two card torn and restored card. Uh, you're pretty much using one card to, you know, seemingly tear the other, but it's beautiful. You, you tear the card, uh, you have two cards, you hold them back to back, you pretend to tear them. You know, it's a beautiful method. Uh, but he was pretty much not happy with the way that they said, uh, that they knew how the trick worked. And I'm like, I don't think that's, I don't know. I don't know. It just seems, it just, it, it's a lot of misconstrued things uh, from Jay's thing on how he secretly fooled them and what actually happened on the show that I, I, I thought the whole situation was very weird. And I'm probably one of the biggest Jay Sankey fans, like probably one of the biggest Jay Sankey fans. So, you know, uh, how embarrassing, would, uh, top notch says, how embarrassing would it be if some magician didn't fool them, but he said he did, and then the producers had to expose him. Uh, yeah, yeah, how fucked? That would be so cringy. Imagine, you're like, hey, you didn't fool me. No, guys, that's not the method, and then Johnny Thompson has to come out with his fucking perfectly blow-dried hair and say, uh, yeah, you, they, you didn't fool them, you dumb cunt. Like, he has to come out and fucking pretty much call him out. That would be so cringy. Uh, he messed up by not saying that at the actual show that they fell for his fake methods. Yeah, at the same time, but I, I just think that a lot of things didn't make any sense. Like he said that they were fooled by this thing with the thumb. I don't think so. I don't think they were fooled at all by that. Uh, and then he did a trick. He apparently said that they, they cut a trick out entirely. Uh, also, I need to rewatch the video, but he said that they cut a trick out uh, from the actual foolless thing. Uh, which is one of the main tricks that he wanted to do. It was just a whole weird situation. Um, but, I mean, I, I don't think he fooled them. Like, I don't think there's anything that he did over there that, that fooled him. It was just, it was a weird situation, man. Uh, you don't need condoms. No, just pull out. Pull and pray, dog. Pull and pray. Pull, pray, and then uh, put in. That's the, that's the secret to not getting him pregnant. Don't do that, by the way. That's not the... Uh... You'll get him pregnant. Uh, just joined. Did you talk about Jay's tweet about cardistry? 
I talked about that a couple streams ago, and I said that I don't think it's a big deal at all. Uh, Jay's welcome to have, you know, he, he can have whatever the fuck opinion he can about Carter Street. My issue with what he said is how he said it. Because, you know, you can have the opinion that you think Carter Street sucks. You, 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 that's a perfectly valid opinion. I don't think Carter Street sucks. Is this working? Is this working? Shit just got real. Oh, it's actually working? Hey, there you go. What a fucking shit show. Uh, if you could see, it's lights out here. It's uh, lights out because uh, uh, FPL is working on the line outside. And it just so happens that uh, when they decide to want to cut the power to your house, they'll just cut it. They won't tell you shit. Um, so unfortunately, I'm going to have to end it here because I'm going off the hotspot on my phone. And I don't think that's going to be good for anyone. So I'm going to end it here, uh, probably, and I'll come back because fuck FPL. So um, I'm going to go figure out different ways to ejaculate inside of a chicken.